I know, starting on a green canvas like that in Planet Zoo can be pretty overwhelming, especially if you are new to the game or you lack experience. In this mega tutorial, the all-in-one 2024 tutorial, you are going to learn everything you need to know to master Planet Zoo and to basically never fear this green field of grass in front of you anymore. We are going to take it very slowly, step by step, you're gonna see all the chapters down below. This is gonna be a long video. Hey there, this is Rudy from the future. You might be wondering what are you doing here? Well, I just saw that and this is three hours plus of footage. It's the full mega tutorial as promised, so don't say I haven't warned ya. But I just wanted to quickly drop in and tell you this is over three hours of a video. There is every single bit in here, including stuff I haven't even known. Now, this is a long video and very unusual for people in 2024 to watch. But if you do so, please enjoy it and check out all the infos and little bits I have in there for you. It is a full tutorial for Planet Zoo. After this video, you will be mastering everything. So enjoy it. So grab yourself a snack, a tea, or whatever you need to feel comfy and cozy. We are going through it with a decent pace, but we are going to take it slow and easy. And we are going to make everything I have asked you guys for, what is important to you, and everything you need to know if you are a complete beginner. And even for the experts out there, there might be something in you have not known yet. So let's get going with the first thing. I'm also trying to make not too many cuts or anything, because you want to follow this along, and so we are just going through it. The first part of any build I recommend doing is going to the settings. Because because if you're playing franchise mode, well, you have the settings, but if not, you have to check what you want to do. And um, I want to do this with you together. So the first thing I want to do is go with you to the settings. Yes, that's right. We go to the settings first, because we are in sandbox. If you start a challenge or a franchise, you basically are all set at the beginning. But since we are in sandbox mode, I want to do a couple of settings. So what we're going to do is we are going to start with a challenge preset. And the only thing we are going to change is basically the economy. We are going to disable the cash and the conservation credits as this is just going to take too much away from us doing this tutorial but everything else will be kept on because we want to make a tutorial for you guys also to be able to play so considering you have enough money and enough conservation credits and we also will talk about how to get both of it the best way we just do it that way set a apply and then we are gonna get going so before doing anything else we need to think a little bit ahead now this is our entrance building uh, for the sake of doing this video we are going to keep it but if you play franchise for example to get a bit of extra money you can start deleting this thing here at the beginning um, and you can also delete one of the two spawners that are in here don't make the same mistake I did and do delete both because they're quite expensive so you want to keep one but first thing we're going to do and in this tutorial you've seen at the beginning what you will be able to do at the end and also on the thumbnail obviously we need to create our planning and the good thing about this video is I have not even made up my mind yet because I want to give you the full experience so the first thing I always do is like take the terrain paint and then there's one important thing to do at the beginning we just go back to settings one more time and this time around you want to go into graphic settings and it's very important that you deactivate your v-sync I usually like playing with v-sync but when it comes to painting terrain and doing the terrain work this will make one and work wonders because it's going to help you to paint a lot quicker and a bit more accurate so what I want to do is go all the way up to the intensity and yeah well three is actually okay and if you paint now you can see how quick that works just to show you the difference we have uh, v-sync activated yet again uh, confirm that one go back go back to the terrain and we do that same thing again look how slow that is okay so you know later on in the game it won't do wonders but um i mean if you have like less fps anyways but at the beginning i find that super annoying and i just want to terrain paint stuff you know if i paint you i want i want it to be quick okay so first things first we're just going to fill in that one again so there you go now i want to build something small with you and i want to do not only just the habitat but i also want to do the surroundings because specifically you guys ask for it before we start doing this here are little tips you have on your keyboard a couple of shortcuts um, a couple of those I will tell you 
Um, one of these uh, shortcuts that you should definitely know is hitting your um, plus key and the left one next to it because I'm, I have a German keyboard. I can't tell you what it that is in your language. In my language, it's the U, but I don't know what's in your language. So it's the plus key and the one left to it. Both keys are the left to the enter key. You can increase or decrease the size of your painting tool. That works also for pathing and other things where you need to decrease and increase this. Now, with that said, we are going to paint our area. And as I said, I want to make like a habitat, I want to make like a restaurant area and the backstage area. What you always want to think about, like you're coming into the zoo, okay? So this is the first thing you want to do. And then you want people to have a space to kind of uh, get together and uh, find a way to go later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little plaza over here from which the zoo is going to start. And typically, you have a couple of options. And I want to make sure that we can go to the right hand side into one part of the zoo. I want to make sure that you can go to the left hand side to one part into the zoo and I want to have a chance to go straight and this straight path shall definitely be a little bit more wide because that's going to grant you access into a zoo. We, we are not going to make more than that okay so this is basically where you do that. Now as for the habitat and so on we have more options to go for so we could put the restaurant on this side we could put this on this side or we can put this on this side. For the sake of this tutorial we are going to make two different habitats Habitats. One is going to be a, I call it a facade habitat because that's going to um, block away the look into our backstage area and the other one is going to be a very natural one, okay? So the facade habitat is going to be this one here to the left hand side and this is going to be painted in sand real quick. So this is going to be on this hand side over here. And then we will have the backstage area right behind this. This is where the backstage area is going to sit. So it's very important that you plan ahead. And if you don't know how to come up with ideas, I always recommend going to Google Earth, to Pinterest, or to the wonderful website of zoochat.com, because on these websites you find a tremendous amount of inspiration when it comes to designs and so on and so forth. Um, this location here for the backstage area is very neat uh, for a couple of reasons. So if we are going to have, and this is what we are actually going to do, we are going to have our restaurant area being here on the left hand side and we could also incorporate maybe like a gift shop or something like this but I don't want to go over the top so we are going to keep that relatively easy over here to the left hand side okay so this is where we are going to put this and then as promised on this right hand side over here we are going to have our natural habitat just all the way over here. Yeah, we don't really need to paint the whole thing. You get the idea. Now, as this is done, um, I want to also kind of quickly connect this, whatever. Um, we need to talk about why I had these ideas. This is very important. More than using the tools, this is super important because that will you know, help you to make the layout. Obviously, I'm going a little bit more into a sandbox thinking. If you play franchise, you want to make sure that you take the energy from this area. Now, and at this point, it's a very good option to speak about the hotkeys uh, that are very important. If you press H on your keyboard, that'll bring up this overview. And what you want to do is check the power and you see this is the radius of the power. So at this point, we haven't done anything, but this means if we go into any facility that requir requires power and so like for example, what we want to do is we're going to go for the most important, the Animal Trade Center. You can see this is the furthest you can go to give it power. Now, fortunately enough, it's right in our area of interest. So that is why I painted this uh, circle. I didn't know, but I had a feeling that this is actually the size, but I didn't know that I was so accurate by painting it. That is very fortunate. Now. If you put all these buildings inside of the radius, you don't need to do a new power source at the beginning. This is why I tried putting this thing. Now. Before we do anything else like painting and uh, detailing and habitat and whatsoever, now it's time to block out the area. So put down all the facilities required. Now I have this thing put down now here. This is the trade center, but I have it wrong way round facing. So you can always use your Z and Y keys on your keyboard to rotate your building on a grid. Uh, very important stuff because you want to rotate this. If you have a um, piece that is not tagged to the grid. Now you can see down here in this list you can see this hash icon to the left for example of this quarantine building. This means it is a building that is on a grid so you can't rotate this on the Z axis by the way but you can rotate this on the ground axis on the grid so with Y and Z you can rotate it on this one. Now I want to have it a bit differently rotated so I'm gonna hit um, escape again so to leave the group and once it's selected with the bluish outline you can press Press X on your keyboard and that's gonna bring up the gizmo. The gizmo is a 
advanced tool, which we are going to have to talk about quite a lot in this tutorial. But this one is gonna be very helpful for you in many cases because you can move things super precisely, as you can see. Very, very simple. And if you press X again, it's gonna bring up a rotation slider, which also gives you access to 360 degrees of freedom. And if you're not like the type of guy who wants to uh, do this from the very beginning in all the freedom available, you can click down here to the angle snap. You can also do the same by pressing the space bar. It's gonna enable and disable the angle snap. And then you can go through various different um, rotation steps. Now you can just put them, as you can see, 15 degrees. We'll always rotate this by 15 degrees. And if you, you know, obviously go to 30, the increment, oops, uh, will be less. Let me just do that again to, for, so you can see that. Uh, there you go. Hello. Okay, now it's just not gonna make me move it again. Hello. Come on, do this. And okay, for whatever reason, the game just doesn't allow me to do that again. Select the group. There you go. Um, so here we go. Sometimes it's a bit finicky. Uh, if you just place it, it doesn't allow you to do that again. You just need to select the group manually again. Um, by pressing X, so you can also skip through these two modes. And now just to show you, 30, 30 degrees will have a bigger increment. And obviously, as you can guess, 45 does the same. Now, this one doesn't allow you 90 degrees. With free roaming pieces, which we will talk about with detailing later on a lot, uh, they have the ability to have 90 degrees rotating and even more beyond that as well. But for a grid piece, it doesn't make any sense because you could easily just use the grid. All right, now as we figured out how to place down uh, buildings themselves, we are going to go ahead and uh, we are going to place all the buildings required for the start. And actually, these are not that many. So we are going to put down the uh, wonderful trade center over here, which is required in order to bring animals into the park in the first place. And then we are going to go ahead and we are going to check out, first of all, the facilities tab. And then we go down to the staff facilities. I highly recommend uh, putting off the blueprints tab. And then um, you have a bit of a better overview of the facilities yourself, because we want to dress them up later on ourselves. So what I would do now is I'm gonna put down a keeper hut. Um, and we're going to put down a small one, because assuming that you guys are playing this game also in franchise we don't want to start too big okay so I'm gonna align this very much down here as much as I can I have absolutely no mods installed by the way as I promised we will talk about mods later in this video but we are going to figure out everything without mods first of all completely vanilla and uh, if you're watching this in a year's time and there will be a console version maybe um, potentially you can use that as well because that will have no mods obviously but we're gonna pl place down this wonderful build over here too and if you're playing also in franchise mode you would require a research center too um, in order to make your vets research the animal you have just placed later on in your habitat so this is why we're going to put this one down too so we're going to go for the research center and we're just going to put this ever so much next to this building over here just aligning that pretty nicely and before we leave this, we are going to put a couple more buildings down that are required. And uh, for those buildings, I will actually put them in between here. And um, we are not going to have... Oh, we're actually, we are going to have water. So let's, for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to place down a water treatment as well. This one is very important when it comes uh, to cleaning the water that is required for some animals. Now, I would highly recommend pressing H here because, I mean, it shows you the radius in which the influence is. And the radius means whenever the radius touches water, and it doesn't matter if it's just a tiny square centimeter of your water bottom or if it's the entire one, it will be refreshed and clean so that's important but press H on your keyboard to deactivate that so you have better control over where you're going to put this now you can tell this is a small habitat on this side and we're going to work with two different techniques of habitats and this is why we will require uh, require water at one point so I'm going to put this down right over here okay so this is basically what we need in this case um but as promised we are going to go step by step so this is why I'm going to put down all the facilities required so as these these are all put down which is nice also let me pause the game a uh, very very good tip if you're playing franchise or so pause the game at the beginning so you're not sucking up your money and um, that's very important as i said we want to have like a restaurant over here so let's actually put this down now this is where we need to go for the guest facilities and the guest facilities you'll find under this tab over here and then when you go into uh, 
um, this mode you can see there are various tabs down here for like finances, drink stalls, food stalls, information, merchandise, toilets and zoo entrances. Now as we do want a restaurant you can go either to food or to drink. It's gonna be in both of these um, because restaurant offers both drink and food needs. Um, and so we're gonna put this down. The beauty of this building is it comes with an open kitchen and now it's very strategically where we're gonna place this. Now um, this is the entrance here, that open space and it's kind of big you know this is one of the things I don't like about this building. It's like four by four by four in the size so if you don't know what that means we have a grid and the grid has four meters each or in this case even bigger because it goes by uh, 8 by 16 meters over here but usually it's a bit smaller um, and this is where you can see these buildings are basically uh, of a footprint of 4x4x4. Four by four by four. Now I'm gonna place this in a way that the path is not uh, super awkward so I'm gonna rotate this and put this basically in a 45 degree angle towards our pathway over here uh, for a couple of reasons. I'm gonna drag this even further to the path like that. It should be fine. And one thing we also need is a restroom because we want to have a restroom and this one is gonna be placed behind the building because this one has a bad level of influence um, even though if you're dressing things up it will still have a relatively small but still a negative radius. I'll come to that in a second. But once we have put that down, there's one more thing we want to place down and that is an information kiosk. You're not required to do that in sandbox mode. If you play sandbox mode, it doesn't really matter that much. But um, the information kiosk is very much required in any other mode because it will grant you the opportunity to sell tours and guided tours to your guests and they make quite a lot of money. So they are very important also for the education needs. So you want to have that in a central area of your zoo. And now it's again, as I said, it's all about planning at the beginning. A big part of the entire experience in Planet Zoo is planning because otherwise you'll find yourself in a bit of a problematic situation later. You can always fix that, but you know, it's just gonna make things more complicated than needed. So if we go back to facilities, you will see under the information kiosk, you will find also something else. Not only the information center, you'll also find that as a counter. Now these things have been added to the game over the course of the years, and these are small counters where you can build the shell around those yourself. Not every building comes with an open stuff like that, so the restaurant is like semi-open as you can see, the toilet will always have this big cube and all the staff buildings will also have the cube because they are actually designed indoors. Now um, the question is where do we put the information kiosk? Now this one can be designed freely and I want to put this in a specific uh, place and it's gonna be on this corner over here. The reason for that is I want to avoid congestion in a way. Now, if we put down the path in a couple of seconds, you will see that the struggle is to get the path down. Pathing is not the easiest in the game, but it's very important to ensure that you have a good ded uh, dedicated spot for it to get to, and then later on you can do this. But before we get to the pathing, let me just quickly explain the radius of influence to you. Now, every building comes with a couple of things, and um, as we go through this thing, for example, over here, a couple of things you need to know. First of all, this is toilet block number one. You have uh, the first year of April date is open. This is where you put it down. You have 0% of appeal. That means wherever you build something around, this building will have a lesser radius of negative influence. But we are talking about the negative influence in a second. Now you can see all the data and you can also set a price for it. So for example, we're gonna put this to 20 cents and then you can also say synchronize that for the park. I rarely found any occasions where I wouldn't sink any prices so sometimes you want to have like higher prices in very crowded areas where people would go there but other than that changing the price doesn't really make that much uh, sense and if you go into the maintenance tab over here you can change a work zone we are going to talk about work zones a lot later once we've set everything down and you can then change the routines to whatever you like and you can also say i want to have a routine every month so that the caretaker is getting here every single month um, which is more expensive and more heavy load for them obviously but that's that and while we are at it uh, i can also show you the overlay so once you press h again you'll come back to the heating map over or heat map over here and you've got obvious the animals we'll talk about that later habitats temperature water power buildings which is very interesting and then you've got the all facilities staff facilities or guest facilities so if we take for example a look at staff facilities it's going to only highlight the staff facilities 
you know, guest facilities, only those ones, obviously. And now, negative impact on guests. As you can tell over here, there is a negative impact on guests of these three buildings. I'm a bit confused to why the Toyland isn't doing it. I think it may just get this later on, because we just haven't hit play. I don't know. Maybe that's the reason why. Um, but usually it has a negative influence too, whatever it doesn't. But over here you can see it and the more you click into it and the more you have this appeal reduced by, actually you have increased the appeal, it's going to reduce the negative area. But you will never get under 50%. So the maximum reduction of negative area is by 50% of the original area. So that's that. Now, this is done. Very nice. Also, what I forgot is this only becomes a negative influence as long as it's not cleaned, by the way, as soon as it's dirty. That's why it's not showing it as of now. So we've done this all fine. We've set out the layout. We've uh, made sure where we're going to put everything. And now it's really up to your style of playing what you will do next. You can now go and zone the habitats first. You could also go and do the pathing. You can employ some staff members. But here are a couple of things to think about. If you play with any kind of currency enabled, you will have to pay from the second you put something in. And let me just quickly talk about barriers before we will actually use them. We are not going to use them now, but just as a couple of general infos for the game. All things you put down will take money, including barriers, because these will uh, dilapidation, as you can see over here, they will get worse over time and then they have to be fixed, which costs money and workforce of your mechanics. Now, you don't want to use those fences at all. The only fence you can use is the null fence, which obviously has null costs for you as well, but also it has null security, so we have to overcome that. I will show you a couple of tricks later on how to make a habitat easily without any fence. Um, and also, there are a couple of things where you can't really do it without a fence. We're also going to talk about that. But yeah, so this is this is really what we want to do. Also, I want to change one more little thing because I really feel like this is something we should do. Um, and I want to quickly get a special in here. So we're going to paint this area real quick. And this area over here is going to be a special viewing area for maybe underwater. I just changed my mind for a bit. It's going to be underwater. So maybe we are going to also bring this a bit more in here just to have some more space. More about that in a second, okay? Now, as we've done all of these things and we keep in mind that everything you put down from the beginning costs money, including your staff members, including your barriers, I would highly recommend to start with the pathing because that is also the most unnecessary thing to do. <laughs> no, it is very it's very necessary, but it's it's painful, okay? But here are a couple of tricks. Okay, we're going to go through pathing now step by step. Don't you worry, we are going to get this. Now, Opening the pathing over here will bring up the pathing menu. Just very quick, we have three different options. We've got the normal path, we've got the queue, which is for rides and tractions, and we've got the staff path, which is granting only your staff members access to the path. Those are very good if you want to have path that is only allowed for your staff members. I'm going to quickly start with those because they are very easy to understand. Now, as you can see, this is a basic area we don't want to have our staff members roam around on. But this is our area where we only want to have staff members going around. So we are just going to build these things and I'm not even sure why. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna just quickly do this um, real quick. So I'm gonna start off with this one. Uh, it's a very finicky thing I built over here, but don't worry, we're just gonna get this. So first of all, I want to lay this down to the ground and then I'm gonna connect the next building to it. And this is not this one. Okay, I can't connect this one because it's too close. Good. So that's part of the tutorial too. We have to rearrange this real quick. They are too close together for, for the liking of the pathing. It is finicky. I always said that. Okay, this is also without power. Didn't I put this close enough to be in power? Let's see if that is already enough. Do you have power now? Do you have power? Okay, this one hasn't, this one has. Okay, we have to rearrange the whole thing. Now, let's quickly use the beauty of one tool. I haven't explained, this is the multi-selection tool. So if you haven't grouped anything, you can use the multi-selection tool. You just drag over things, and then you can press X and move them all at once, which we're going to do. And then click down, and now usually it should be in power. Awesome. Okay, so this is done. We just moved it slightly. Now, as for the path, hopefully this time around it'll work. Uh, let's have a little look. If it does work over here, that looked better to me. Yes, there you go. And we are going to just quickly do this over here. And let's see if we can 
manage to well let's first of all go here and then see if we can connect that one ah, that didn't work but there was there was the option now finally we have connected it is you know i won't i won't spoil anything i won't say uh, anything that isn't true the pathing path is finicky sometimes you have to try around like this there is no way around this or you're just using free build but this is not part of the tutorial as of now so what we're going to do we're going to put the path down over here as you can tell now i'm just going to quickly click this down like this However, there are a couple of controls we have to talk about. On the right hand side, you can see there are some uh, options you can take. There is angle snap, which I have already explained. It's the exact same thing. Either you have angle snap activated or deactivated it will, you know, decide whether you're going to move your stuff on a certain snap or if you completely do it by 360 degrees on a free in a free area. The length obviously defines how long the piece should be. You can also make like super long wobbly path like that or you can also go narrow it down to one meter and then it's just a very short piece and you can obviously play around with width of your part, uh, path from four to actually 10 meters there is another option align to grid we talk about that in a couple of seconds and there are a couple of options over here which i'm also going to talk about in a second so that was just the basic stuff there is a beauty we are going to talk about at the last thing of the queue section or actually of the path section in the queues we have something very special we can reduce the path to actually two meters as you can tell we can have a three meter option whoops let me just put this next to you. There you go. And then we can go all the way up to four meters, but not taller than that. And there is a way to utilize this to actually get the normal path also thinner as four meters, because four meters tends to be a little bit too big at some point. Now, we are going to get rid of these things. And um, if you want to delete path, and this is actually the tutorial I wanted to do, you can hold down the delete key. And then you can see there is this circle appearing around your cursor and then you just hold down the left mouse button and then just drag over the path you've just created bam they're gone okay super simple but now let's just quickly lay out the path and then we're going to do some special things around this area but we have to prepare it real quick and therefore i'm just going to go to terrain and i'm going to lower it down by about two meters and since it's a bit, little bit harder to go down by two meters you can use something else but we are going to talk about the terraforming tool in a bit so i'm just going to do this for by by hand so to say and what we're going to do is go to the construction tab and then just type in two meters and take any piece that is just two meters i'm going to use that one over here i'm just going to drag this all the way into the ground somewhat like that is fine and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint it down as soon as I see the ground of it. I'm going to stop. Okay, so there is a good point. And now you can use the flatten to uh, terrain option. I'm going to go to two meters and increase the intensity. And then you've got there is the space I want to click because that levels the whole thing down here. Think about that later once we talk about the terrain. And then I'm going to basically dig out exactly the area that I've just marked myself and then we're just going to paint a little bit more in here. But as I said, more about that later. I just want to prepare the area real quick. Okay, cool. We're going to leave this piece here. We need this later on. Okay, so now as for a couple of basic controls, we are going to put down the path down here first. I want to have this dark asphalt path because I really like this and I rarely have the chance to put it down. You can see there is not really that much space for our pathing. So what I want to do this time around is I want to show you the align to grid option because that's the way how we get this um, to a straight element. And what I want is I want a straight element of uh, four meters of uh, width and eight meters of length. So I'm gonna put this down all the way to here. And then instead of moving over, I'm gonna say align to grid. And as you can see, there is the grid I have. Actually, it's not really the grid I wanted. So um, I just wanna do this like so. And now if I click align to grid, you can see this is where the grid appears. And the only thing I wanted to do is I wanted to get square edges. Now, the grid means basically you turn the free forming path into building on a grid. So usually you could now click a huge plaza in, which we're going to do in this space in a second. Um, so as you, you know what, we can actually go from over here. It allows us to do that. So we are just going to change the pathing to, I think we should use this one over here. This is quite a nice one. So you can basically paint out, first of all, the area that you want to. You obviously do see that this is a squarey path now and we are about to smooth 
use that out later, which is also part of this part of the tutorial. So we're just going to put, put this in wherever we find now a space without actually making breaking this. I think that looks that looks pretty fine to me. So there's no real other space left. Okay, cool. And this is now the perfect connection of those two areas. But I want to only make this square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this piece. And whoops, it doesn't let me do this. Okay, it doesn't let me make this uh, square. Now, what we have to try in order to get this done, but this could be a little tight. So I'm gonna leave this as it is, I guess. We can't make this tight, so yeah. Well, I have to leave it then this way. Um, let's see if we can smooth the terrain out a little more here to the sides to give us a bit more space to work with. Okay, so over here you can see if this happens, this is when the pathing is too close to the terrain. As you've just seen, it was malfunctioning. So what you can do is delete this bit and then go back to the terrain and then you can paint over. As soon as it's gone, you can paint over. Um, over here we're gonna uh, leave a little bit of space, but that's fine. You know, let's first of all put down the path. And this is why I was so much keen on putting down pathing down first. Let's see where the grid goes. Okay, it should have been the same as over here. We can actually align to grid here and then we can also lower it down by holding down shift you know if you have this for example over here and you set align to grid usually it is on the same height as your building is but if you hold down shift you can move it down to the next level okay and as i wanted to put it down here you can see now there is space to put them down i'm gonna do exactly this and i'm gonna also add one more over here the reason why I'm doing this is following in a second. So what you can do next is first of all, create a connection piece over here. Don't do anything else, okay? That's very important. And the next step is we need to bring this one up. So like so, because that is where we want to have the staircase, okay? Now, um, how do you do that? So I did this in a very easy way. You take your cursor and now you go over the piece and once you're hovering over the piece, you can just hold down your left mouse button and then just drag it up. That's all you need to do. You just drag it up and then it fa starts creating the stair. Now, with the stairs, there are two different elevation steps. And those two are basically this variant over here, which has like a very light angle, um, which is a good version if you want to create like ramps over here. And as soon as, oops, I have to redo it. Oh, by the way, maybe one of the most important things is this game does feature redo and undo options. So once you are not happy with what you've just done, you don't need to delete it. You can just press Control Z to undo or Control Y to redo the action you've just made. So that is very, very neat because this way you'll always have control over. Now, this is a intentionally finicky area I've chosen. You can see there's a lot of red around our stuff. There is another option. If you go over here to the right hand side, you will find a couple more options I'm gonna quickly talk about. So, flattened terrain basically does what you can expect it to do. If I put this down over here, it will just flatten the terrain around it and you can basically do this and it creates automatically a ramp, which I think is beautiful, okay? So sometimes it does work just like so. And look at the beautiful ramp you've just created. This is a beautiful thing I just recently figured out and it, it just kind of helped me so much. It almost feels like modding. It feels illegal when I found this out. Um, super simple, but th the way to do that is really use the grid to do it, okay? It really feels illegal to know that, but it just works. Um, tunneling is an option where it normally doesn't work over here, but I'm just gonna show you. Um, it just doesn't flatten the terrain. It creates a hole around your terrain that you could theoretically do a tunnel. That is very interesting when you dig into like a, a mountainside or something like that, it really helps out. Um, then if we go back to the options, you can see there is path to ports, uh, which Obviously, you have um, if you if you have raised path, like for example, like so, uh, it'll have path supports. Usually, it should. Why doesn't do it? Wait a sec. This is a weird situation where it doesn't feature any. This seems to be a little. I think I found out a little bug over here. So usually, these things should have supports. Um, let's see if that was just maybe this path over here having the issues. Let's see. Oh no, it was just that. Okay, weird. Wow, look at that. Okay, now it works. Um, so yeah, it basically just creates these paths. So I'm, I'm very sorry that that was very inconvenient, but 
um, it seemed there was like a little bug in there. Anyhow, um, the next thing is curved slopes. Now, the beauty of um, the, the game is that it also allows for a couple of things. So pathing isn't really that bad. So normal, normally, if you are having this option uh, deactivated, as it is right now, if as soon as you drag it up, it will always create a straight piece. No matter where you go with your cursor, it always goes straight up. As soon as the curved slopes are activated, you are able to curl this thing around like so. Um, which is great, but it comes with the caveat of being very finicky at times. It also is combined with the angle snap. So if the angle snap is turned off and you've got curving on, you can see how precise you can make the ramps. However, be warned, because it is going to make building slopes sometimes very, very finicky. Because if you're not looking straight down like I do right now, and you're looking a little from the side, so let's say you're building like so, and you're like, oh yeah, I want to go straight up. And then all of a sudden, it's just a little bit curled, and you didn't want to have it curved at all. That's a little bit of an issue. So be warned if you're using this option, curved slopes. Um, curbing is something um, that most of the players, including me, hate. Uh, it creates this curb on the path, which 99% of the times I would avoid doing because I just don't like it and I want to cover up everything myself. But some of the path, not all of them, have quite neat variants of... Um, of these curbs and then you can use them so some of them as you can see they come all with different versions of curbs um, and then you can also activate uh, the railing on ground queue or the railing on ground path for example then it deactivates the curb but it actually activates the um, the railing and you can also click on both by the way there you go and then you do have both so a couple of little variants you have in here um, and then you can also, you know, do this on various ele elements and areas. You can do that on elevated, on ground. And you can also snap alongside barriers, which I'm going to show you once we have barriers. And this T-junction over here um, is also very interesting. Now, this is, you don't need to click this. I'm going to show you exactly what that means. So, if you have a path, and we are going to deactivate all these things because they're ugly as hell. Um, so, if you have a path like this, the path always wants to connect with your other path over here. It automatically creates one. If you hold down your Z or Y key, depending on what keyboard you're using, if you're German like me, you want to type down your Y key. If you are using international version or English version, you want to hold down your Z key. And this way you're changing the way the junction works. Now this one is a smooth junction over here. And as soon as you hit down the key and you hold it down, it's always creating a 90 degree angle, which sometimes can be helpful if you are in some areas where it just does crazy stuff and you just want to have like a proper connection, you can hold it down and curl the path around certain areas. As you can see, you can make some nice curves if you want to. But yeah, that's just like a little explanation. Let's get rid of all the pathing over here. We don't need that. So what we want to do, I'm going to finish this off over here, as I said, by enabling tunneling. And then let's go back to angle snap and also, whoops, let me, oops. Hello, why am I doing this? Okay, well, let me just go back and hello. I'm not sure why the hell, okay. Oh, did I do tunneling? Yeah, that was maybe the mistake. There you go. Oh wait, I need to do the other one. Also, you can see you can change the elevation step over here, which is kind of cool, depending on where your cursor goes. Um, so that's pretty cool. Obviously, I want to have the less, can I go even further? Sometimes you can also do this with, increasing the length of your path okay well that doesn't doesn't do the trick okay sometimes that helps anyways we've flattened the terrain and we've created a nice little um, pathway leading down into this area which i think is beautiful and we're gonna keep it for the moment being now things are going to start to become very exciting we've done most of the stuff I want to have like another plaza over here, which we're going to do with what we've just learned. Let's do the uh, herringbone path over here. And um, I'm just going to do the following. I'm just going to change this back to the length of one. And there are a couple of shortcuts, by the way, on your keyboard. If you press plus or the left, the key left to your plus icon, you can again increase and decrease the width of your path. And if you take the two uh, keys above it, 
um, which in my case is the question mark sign or the backslash, the forward slash, and it also is the semicolon or whatever, um, to increase the length and decrease the length of your path. So if you want to do this with the keyboard, which sometimes is very helpful, highly recommend doing this. But this time around, I'm going to have the grid and I'm going to use what we've just learned and we're going to create a grid over here. Let's spare out this little part there. Um, and we're going to connect everything. Let's leave out this little part over there. And we're going to do this. Okay, look at that. Noise. I just want to go once more around the restaurant. And do it this way. Fine. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to connect this path over here. And what you want to do is you want to go with the width that this main path comes with. And I'm going to do... Actually, let's do one less. Okay, this is six meters. It actually used to be seven meters. But going to go with six meters. I'm going to deactivate the angle snap now. And as you can see, moving this piece around, it'll always try to automatically snap to the pieces we've already laid out. I don't want that. So if you do not want that, you hold down control. If you hold down control, you're going to see nothing happens. It's going to stay away. I mean, it's going to have some issues once you can't connect it, but it's going to stay away from the other path. So you can just put it down just as you want. And this is exactly what I want right now because, well, I'm going to show you in a second why. Uh, I have to flatten the terrain over here real quick. And now as the path is laid out, you can only flatten it so much as you can see. And then we're going to try to sneak the path in here. Actually, we need to get a lot thinner over here. Uh, let's do... Oops, that was the wrong key. I wanted, didn't want to show you this hotkey. Um, so I'm going to go and try if I can sneak this through here. I actually have to go with 4 meters in this space. But, but uh, I mean, that's okay. And again, the important part is to hold down the control key in order to not connect to anything, you know. And then we're just going to bring this all the way down here. And we're going to do the same over on this side. Just follow along the path yet again. And then we said this one should be a bit wider. So increase the width again. And we're going to put this down here. To avoid any congestions later on in the zoo, we're going to go with 7 meters. And we're going to bring this all the way into this area. Now, we've, we've basically created the bare minimum we need for the pathing path and this is the layout i'm gonna go for let's first of all do the main path okay this is our first focus to actually make this the best way we can we need to first of all get this path over here nice okay and you can see we have some issues because this is like a little bit of a wobbly area we don't really like right so what we can do we can smooth the whole thing out now this is one of the I would say one of the biggest revelations of the Planet Coaster time, or the biggest finding in the early stages of Planet Coaster. This is a bug in the game that has become a feature and Frontier intentionally did not delete it. Once you are in a corner like that, you know, and you want to create a junction, it does things like so. And for the sake of doing it, we are just going to create this junction now. Click. Very important, now you're not allowed to go further. Leave it as it is. And now you go back and you delete the piece. Don't do the undo. Just don't do the undo. I repeat, do not undo this action. You want to delete this with right click on your mouse now. And see what happens. The whole thing is rounded. And this is the way how you can actually smooth out a lot of the pathings over here. So we are going to create a connection of these two. And this is the corner I want to smooth out now. And I'm just going to do the exact same everywhere we where we are requiring this. Just going to connect this over here. And now I'm going to start to basically smooth out these corners. Well, sometimes you have to fiddle around a little, decrease the size of the thing you want to, to make it not super. Now you can see using a smaller version helped me to create a smaller um, area over here. And sometimes it even works in areas where the terrain is a little bit nitpicky. Um, and then you can just go on like so. Over here, that doesn't work because of our wonderful building here. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can connect this. I like that quite a lot. And then we can also just try to connect this one over here. Actually, let's increase the size a bit to make this nicer. There you go. And the only thing we need to fix is this bit over here. Look, sweet. But it did offer us something nice. Um, you know what? I'm just going to try to see if we can do this without... Um, uh, let's see. Ah, okay. Well, actually, we're gonna fix this one over here and then reconnect both because I quite like this. And now we've already created, like, a very neat area, okay? So, now, let's move over to this bit. And we're just going to smooth out 
the whole thing just exactly the same. And you can tell now things are starting to really shine. Sometimes you can't get as close, but you can still go and smooth things out just like that. And by just clicking, you can see you are constantly improving the shape of your path. You can always get this closer to the other area. And since we do need a couple of connections anyways, I'm just going to do exactly this over here, create these connections. And I'm not quite the biggest fan of this spot over here. Maybe we can improve that by having another connection here and another connection here. Sweet, look at that. And once we are done, and I think this is pretty neat. And I'm not sure if I want to have this hard edge over here. You know what? Let's just smooth it all out. And also this way over here. Look at that. We've now created something really beautiful. And we could even... Oh yeah, I don't want to merge them together. But look. We've already created like a wonderful pathing. Path and I, I used this trick to really connect this path over here to our wonderful information kiosk which we are going to dress up later in a way that it is like a standalone building and not part of the plaza we are going to make it look like being part of the plaza but it's not very important now we've done a lot of stuff already and the tutorial is already quite far in but remember this is very important because this is a step-by-step -step tutorial so you understand every single step on our journey but Trust me, we've already done half of the job. It sounds weird, but it's actually true. We've done half of the job. Okay, now what we are going to do now is we're going to decide for what animal we are building our habitats. And this left-hand side is going to be the African penguin. And the right-hand side is going to be like a African savannah. We're going to go with a couple of very... Um, low-key normal animals because that's that these are the typical zoo animals and so we can do that we could also have gone for meerkats over here but you know just to showcase every option in the game i'm gonna go for that and we have learned already a lot okay the last thing i'm just gonna quickly do because you have learned it now you will be able to do the same i'm just going to connect the path over here real quick the staff path is now also connected oh we also missed out on the toilet let's just quickly reconnect that one awesome that is done now we do make the habitat barrier work, okay? Barrier work is the most important one to have your habitat laid out. And now another strategical planning is required. Where do we put our gates? And also, let me just quickly save for a second because I had some crashes recently and I want to give you a good, wonderful experience and hence I'm gonna quickly stop the video and I'll be back with you after the cut. All right, game is safe. I'm back with you. Now, barriers is very important because first of all you need to decide where your habitat want, needs to go and as we've already painted out we have a good idea and we want to keep our um, destinations short and tight to our main hub for our staff so what we're going to do is we're going to put this gate very much in the face of these buildings and then we are going to put another one just across the street and the only thing we are going to do is we're going to drag it a little further back so we can dress it up a bit more nicely so that's that both habitats are very 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 close to our main um, area but they will still take a huge part of our zoo so just to illustrate that um and therefore i'm just going to quickly use a couple of uh, shape pieces and obviously deactivate the blueprints. Why can the game not just quickly keep that in mind? Anyways, um, just to showcase, oops, I need to redo this. There you go. Just to showcase this over here is all the area we need to cover for our two entrances and our three stuff buildings and one facility building. And this is the area we are going to cover with the zoo. So what you always want to do, you want to keep this area as small and short as possible while you want to cover as much of the rest of your zoo to maximize the effect. So our staff members only need to kind of uh, go from A to B and just, you know, use this area to move. Imagine you're going to put this gate here and this gate here. You're going to increase the distance, the walking distance for our staff members by, I guess, eight times or so. And you always have to count it double, okay? 
And if you then start to increase the amount of times they need to go to the dedicated building, so for example, if you increase the um, frequency of the visits, it's going to make the whole thing worse, okay? Now, as we've done these, one thing I really like to do always is, first of all, um, see where the habitat is going to go, and what we're going to do is edit the barrier, go to the null one, and then in this specific case, you can just do that, Put it down now as for the barriers they are very simple to put down you can see they appear as in a straight line or if you um, want to have it curled you can go to the curve one and then you can see it's curved sometimes you need to reconnect and then just go straight here and now you can make it curve like so and this is just wonderful look at that and then or if you have it curved, you can also hold down, again, depending on where you are, Z or Y key. For the German keyboard users, it's the Y key. For the English or international ones, it's the Z key. You can increase or decrease the way how it's rounded, okay? So that is the way you can do. And then you can just basically follow the path around if you fancy doing so. Um, I tend to, like, if you work with the null piece, I always would recommend going with the curved sections because it really doesn't matter that much and you can almost achieve a straight piece by just keeping the um, radius almost at a, at a zero um, and if you want to have like a tight corner like that you could also just decrease the length and then you know you're basically done the same way. Um, so there's really no need, but if you use the actual barriers in game, for example if you play sandbox and you want to use them um, or if you you know, you're tired of making your own ones, uh, you can just, you know, use uh, the other selection to make them look better together. That is the only reason why I would use the other mode, to make them really look like a straight wall, for example. Um, in the early stages of Planet Zeus, some of these buildings were not able to actually have round um, fences. So, for example, like the Gabion wasn't, or the Hedge wasn't, but by now everything can be um, natively curled or curved if you want to. Now, this habitat is done. And now we can name this and we're gonna call this already African Savannah. This is important later on for our work zones. Normally I wouldn't name them but because I'm lazy, but, <laughs> but it's very important that you do so. So African, African uh, penguins. Alrighty, now as this is done, uh, we need to do a couple of preparations in our habitat before we can put down the barrier because there's one specific thing in here that is different. And I want to make an underwater segment. And this is going to be the tank over here, okay? So we're going to um, basically align everything. So this shall be the area where the underwater segment is going to be located. That's the little beach for them. Um, we could also use the, the blue little penguin. I think, you, you know, we're going to still go for the penguin, the African penguin. Now, we're going to put down the barrier. And this is going to be the glass barrier. And what we want to do, we want to get it as close as possible here to our path. And the problem is we can't really get that close, but we can try to be as close as possible and then cover up the rest. So let me also change the length to, as I said, 8 meters is the length I wanted to go for. Let's just try if we can get even more close. This was actually allowing me to get a bit closer. Let's see. Uh, that, that is already neat. And now... There are a couple of things to think about. We want to make sure that there is a glass wall in front of this where people can have a look, but maybe on the sides I want to have it, you know, covered up with other things. So I'm going to go for the concrete wall. However, not all of these materials can hold body, bodies of water. And this is why we're putting a fence here in the first place. If you want to build water in this game, I need to do this excourse right now because otherwise you potentially do not understand. There is an option to have water in the game. And if we dig down here a little pond, I'm going to flatten the foundation a little, and I'm going to make these edges a little bit more smooth, and then go down here to the water tab. There are a couple of options. We have calm or rough water, and then we have the option to select water or remove the water. I can put down here some water, as you can see, as soon as there is this bluish thing over here we can click and there is water in here this is a volume of water below the surface of the water if we go in you can see there is even the shaders changing and stuff like that we are in and out of the water now we can remove it or we can put rough water in it as a little bit you can the surface texture is a little bit different and we can also click on the water and customize the color of it 
if we like this in a different color we can also go crazy with it we can add bubbles and mist which is also a pretty cool effect if you want like swampy areas you can create some mist let me just quickly hit play so you see see that there are all the bubbles and you can see the mist emerge from it we've got a very i don't know what that is could be like a very uh, dangerous little pit of uh, acid water or something like that yeah anyways this is how water works but not only terrain can contain water actually barriers can do too so if we build like for example a fully covered glass container if that makes sense this one over here you can also use water in here as you can see clicking on the wall or actually hovering my cursor over the wall will also show you there is a valid point over here and click there is valid now with this beautiful example over here i can tell you the different heights of water now um go back to the contraction and type back in two meters make all and then we're gonna put the actually you know we, we are going to use the one meter piece to really highlight that to you as you can see the water in here is now at this very level okay so Remember this. This is the very level of the water. Now we're going to use the whole barrier. This icon over here will let you allow to select all the pieces at once. Bam, there you go. And then once you are changing or altering, for example, the height, everything will alter at the same time. Very convenient. So we're just doing that, okay? And as soon as your glass wall is higher, it can contain more water. See it that way? It's kind of realistic. You can't put it all the way to the top, maybe, because that's not as strong as possible. And also the water can, well, flow over. So you have to always go a little bit lower. But the fun part is, the question is, how high? Now, that is the interesting part. If we are going to have this thing over here, and now we can finally make use of this option. We can click one, and we can click two. And as you can see, the water in Planet Zoo is always one meter of a difference at a time. No matter where I click in between here, you will see either it's on top, there you go, or it's below. But there is no chance for me to go anywhere in between. The water is always one meter at a step. Keep that in mind. That is very, 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 very important. Um, I'm gonna show you now why, okay? So we're going to delete these things and just to show you how quickly you can delete things, get rid of the water, double click on this, select everything, right click on it, it's gone. Now, in here we want to have water. If we go to the terrain tab and we say calm water, you see I'm not able to find even an edge over here to bring water in. So the lower edge over here is too low for me actually. So we first of all have to find the higher edge, but trust me, we don't really need to because we're going to use our glass wall for that. I'm gonna show you how now, because this is rather important. Actually, we're not also going to use the um, glass wall, we're also gonna use the concrete too. And this is the perfect moment to show you the three options of the height mode. The height mode of the fence. Now we have the undulating, which allows us to build always at a height of two meters. And the height will always be taken from the ground level. So it always requires the ground level. And then from there, it goes two meters up. So you will always have an altering height relative height will stay the same but the absolute height will always alter a little bit now if you go for example to this flat top it'll keep always the same flat top but it won't actually change to the terrain so you can actually go into the terrain which is exactly what we are going to use in a second and then the last one over here is flat top uh, top and editable bottom now this one comes in very handy if you want to dig deeper into it to make the water actually go lower so this is why we're going to utilize this option over here i'm quickly going to show you what exactly it does so if you click on this one over here you can now drag it all down and it's creating underwater as you can see there is now a lovely little option where you can drag it all the way down and if i would be to change the terrain in here there would still be a barrier behind so the water wouldn't be flowing out of the habitat this is the main idea now what we're going to do as promised we are going to use this piece and we're going to go a lot a lot a lot smaller uh, or shorter i should say and what i'm going to do over here is i'm gonna paint this already around the habitat something like this is fine um, and actually from oops um from this one on we can already do that as a null fence again uh to be honest 
over here on the last bit, we can... Oops, that was a little too much. I just want to have that one. I'm going to change to underlighting again to bring it back up because we want to go back to our main entrance. So I'm going to do exactly this. And then you can also drag it very nicely to this spot. And then if you reach out all the way to another connection, you can see you automatically create that. And I'm going to further go further with the null fence. So, you know, I don't have the stress to avoid this pump there. And you can also go a little bit to the... Uh, area here. Okay, so now I'm gonna connect this uh, basically You know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna connect this here and you will see why now I want to ensure that we can bring water in okay What I'm going to do now is I have the two concrete pieces I wanted But this one in here in the center it shall not be part of the habitat parameter what the heck is this Campbell speaking of? Well, there is an option under the settings button over here, which means habitat parameter. If you deactivate that one, you can basically use these wonderful walls as something that is not a part of the habitat requirements for the game to calculate where the habitat is. Now it only becomes a barrier, a simple barrier that keeps animals from moving from A to B, but it's not part of the habitat as in a game's perspective. So you can do whatever you want with them and this is exactly what we need. I'm gonna go back to the glass because that's the thinnest piece we have and oops, that one is starting over here. And I'm gonna go to glass and I'm gonna keep the flat top the same. Now what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna paint this around the beach a little. Uh, we can also go to uh, round at this point. It doesn't really matter at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this all the way around and I'm gonna bring this, oops, I didn't want to bring this there. I want to bring this back to this very corner. There you go. This is exactly where I wanted to go. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to select everything in this circle and since we said it should all be the same top we can now raise them all at once just drag it high it doesn't matter and as soon as we hit this point we go to terrain and now we can plop in the water and you can see it actually was quite significantly higher than the rest of our habitat. Now we do have two ways of getting rid of this issue now. So the first thing is we're gonna actually keep this because what you can do, the beauty of this now is go back to the barrier and now you can lower it down almost to the exact height of the water bottom. Um, I, I tend to like to use these concrete ones a little bit more now because they always require you to stay a little higher. But the beauty of this is we can make these things go all the way down. And if we do this, for example, we would easily be able now to use a, um, a stone or something to cover up this little edge over here. However, I think I don't want to do this, okay? So I'm going to revert this until the point where the water wasn't in. And now I know that the water is this height. Actually, what I could do now is I could use another piece again, just whatever piece and uh, align this to the height so I know exactly what the height is. Let's see. So this is the height I need to go to and I'm gonna move this like so. And now the next step is to get rid of the water just to make sure that you can edit the terrain again. And now what we could do is we can just ever so slightly get to the height and then go flatten to foundation and see if we can match the height, we can. And now you just paint outside of the perimeter so let's see if we can get this done completely around here. So just paint all the way here until this very piece. And at this point, we can try to get rid of exactly this area, okay? Just where the glass panels are. Nothing else, just the glass panels and get rid of the glass panels. If we did everything right now, we should be able to put in the water. Let's see if we did it. Boy, we did it. Look how beautiful that is. We have a little beach section now, very nicely aligned, and we even have this lower beach section. Okay, this is very great, but I want to make sure that this is a little bit more smooth here in front. So you see, you're learning now the terrain tools on the fly. I'm gonna smooth out this a little bit more, just for my liking. This is a bit nicer, okay? So we can also get rid of these two pieces. If you don't find them, just use the multi-select piece, and then if you get both, delete it. And at this point, it's very important to bring in 
the water to not destroy any of your hard work on the terraforming. And now what we could do, we can just try to bring in a little bit more of a height difference here to the back. So whatever you're liking is, but we've done most of our job already. So this is that and now we can basically go back in here and lower these things down to whatever we want. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky, sometimes you need to select it again to find uh, these pieces where to... Yeah, there you go, still has it. Yeah, there you go. Lower it all the way down until the game says no, but there you go, computer snow. And now we are done, look! That is fancy, that is really, really cool. And we've done the major work now as of creating our habitat perimeter. This one is easy, this one is easy. And now it's all about styling the habitats. All right, but how do we access actually the habitats or how do we start doing these habitats? Well, there are a couple of tricks um, I want to show you and we're going to go with different ways of doing, first of all, the normal walls. And to create this, we are doing a building tutorial and a habitat barrier tutorial in one go, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you three different versions of how to create just in general barriers and fence types, okay? So we're going to go with a natural barrier Barrier. We are going to go with a combined natural and fence barrier and we're going to go with a pretty normal fence, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is a normal ditch, okay? So this is pretty simple. You take the normal landscaping tool, you're going to use it the push tool and then you go all the way and you do that. Um, also, there's a little trick. If you have the push tool and you hold down control, it's gonna revert the option and it's gonna turn into a pull tool. As you can see, I'm holding down control now and now it's pulling up. If I release control, it's gonna drag it down again. And the same goes with the pull tool. You pull it up and now you hold down control and it's gonna push it down again. So you can, th those two, you can actually just use one. It doesn't really matter which of the two you, uh, you're basically using. But yeah, I wanna have this little ditch over here. And in this specific case, I also want to only use this and I'm not going to use the flatten to foundation tool. Um, and there's a pretty simple reason for that. I want to make this become more natural and so I don't want to have this uh, thing awfully complicated. So the reason why ditches are very helpful in certain cases, and as we're going to have some African animals in here, um, most of them are relatively big and they can't really jump that high, but I can jump high enough to have the requirement for certainly some bigger um, fences. And in this specific case, I want to make sure that uh, in this case, they are not able to jump out. And so this ditch is a little bit lower. What we're going to create over here is a bit of a, you know, a uh, deeper one. So we want to have like a deeper one so that they can't really walk through the water, that they actually would go into a swimming animation. That is rather important. Um, in order to make sure that they're not using this as a platform to jump off of, uh, off off. <laughs> but this is exactly what I wanted to say. You don't want them to be jumping from over here. So we're gonna fill in water real quick. There you go, that shall be fine. And now this side of things um, is gonna be the ditch where our animals shall not be going out. And on the other side, like on the opposite side to, the, to this pathing over here, we can create like a normal fence now because this is basically where um, and they are not able to jump out and you still have a good view to the people and the biggest advantage of this is you can make a relatively low fence now because the jumping distance is relatively increased so the animals are not e that easy to jump outside of the habitat now this is that over here this is like a normal ditch and what we can do over here is we make a ditch without water um, this technique is also relatively simple and i'm gonna just bring this all the way down and then this time around, I'm using the flatten to foundation thing. I'm just gonna go all the way very close. Like I'm gonna push it all the way to the path. It's gonna create this very ugly terrain appearance over here, but don't, don't you worry too much about this, okay? So once this is done, you can then also just slightly create an incline. Uh, you can either do that by uh, chiseling this over here like so. Um, that's, that's an easy step. Like the chisel tool is coming in very handy if you just wanna push over terrain in a certain way. You can and just chisel that so that you have a bit of a bit of an incline how you want it and then once you've done that you can use the smooth tool and smooth that out this, I think this is one of the most easy ways of doing it and you can also keep it relatively steep in order to make sure that they again cannot jump out on this side you can either smooth that out too but it will bring this whole thing even further out again we want to limit that and uh, why we're going to do this I'm going to show you in a second 
So this is the second way of doing it. And then we are just creating like a normal fence as well. But we are going to tackle those three things first of all. And we're going to reuse some of what uh, we have done over there here with our penguins too. I want to do the normal fence over here again, okay? This is the easy step first of all. And we're going to start with concrete. As I said, uh, we're going to do this including a first building tutorial. Just in general, if you are building in Planet Zoo, you have to understand the following logic in the menus. We have a construction menu, we've got a facility menu, and we've got a nature menu. These three menus are basically the most important ones for you when it comes to building. The difference between nature and construction is super simple. You know, under nature, you have basically a lot of pieces that are only connected with nature, obviously. A lot of plants, some planters, and rocks, and so on. In the construction menu, you have everything, well, to construct. That means pieces, assets, walls, lanterns, whatever you can imagine. And then there is facilities, which is kind of a weird thing because it still has some very good items we may actually use or not uh, along the building. Because you can see there are some very cool items in here that can be repurposed or reused in different ways. Um, for example, like these wonderful screen mounts over here, or we have some very cool billboards that can be used for different textures if you want. I'm gonna do this um, just to showcase for you uh, later on. There are multiple ways in how you can utilize that. And then there are obviously some cool things like these uh, canopies that also can be used as pretty nice pieces. So this is like a bit in, in between. And in terms of usage, I would say nature and construction are like almost 50-50. And then you've got the facilities in the middle that you barely even use that often. But there's still stuff you have to understand. Okay, now as for the basic building uh well, things to know is, as I said already with our first building plopping down the buildings, there is difference between two sorts of pieces. The first piece is a free roaming piece that you can see by no actual icon to other than the heart icon. Um, the heart icon is also very interesting. If you do create some favorites, and I'm just gonna like this over here, you can go to filter and then go to your favorites, for example to see your favorite items. You know, you can filter by your favorites over here and then you can see everything that you've just hearted is in your favorites. But you can also create your own tags by just going in here and apply a custom tag that you could do. And I've got a couple of Zizzly tags over here just to show you. I created this at the beginning, but hold on, I never actually continued doing this, so never. there is nothing in here. Um, so there is the option to just sort certain things into a Zizzly list, for example, apply the tag, for example, now Zizzly, and now if you do filter by Zizzly, you'll see that item in the list. Pretty simple. Um, However, it's kind of time consuming to do that, so be warned, okay? It's not that simple. You have to really play ahead and, and do this, but it can become very helpful, especially when you do a certain nature area that you want to maintain, then it makes sense to create that set, like for example, a Zazillion uh, or an African like planter set, for example, then you can also go in that and you always have this. But I have a certainly different technique of doing this, which I'm gonna show you right now. My technique and, well, if it works for you, I'm very happy, but you can also do that with the filter option. The reason why I am using my technique is because I can do it whenever I want for a new build. And then it's only usable for the build, but it's very helpful. What I'm going to do is, the first, before I build something, I have an idea in mind. And my idea for this area is I want to have like a concrete wall with a bit of a nice little iron top on, you know, railing on top. And I want to have a bit of uh, decals to the ground and maybe some rocks and stones to just blend it nicely in with um, the pathing over here. That's what I want to have. And then on the other side, we will put some rocks in to blend it in nicely. So what I'm going to look for, first of all, is I want some stone pieces. And I could go go and scroll all the way through, or I'm just going to type in stone, which is working like a filter for material. Now it's going to look not only for pieces that have the word stone in here, because this very conservation flower pot community design over here has not the word stone in. But if you click on that, it's going to say some tags, and within the tags, you will see stone as the material chosen. So the filter option has been improved over the years, and one of the best improvements certainly is that you can also search for tags and material um, in Indeed. Now, if we type it in again, yet again, you can see every stone item is in here. And with that, I can tell you the second big difference. Now, you can see some items over here that have this little hashtag here to the top left. And this hashtag means it is a grid piece, which without any mod, you cannot manipulate on 
the Z axis. You can obviously move it up and down, but you can only rotate this on the ground level, which means on the X and Y axis, okay? So you're not able to rotate this the other way around. If you take another piece, for example, this one over here, the dry stone wall, which has a different item uh, icon on the top left. And this icon is just to symbolize the relative size of this piece. Now, why do I call this the relative size? Well, because Planet Zoo has a lot of different sets of pieces. You've got the dry stone set, for example, and there are a lot of pieces in this dry stone set. And then this is the smallest of this set, which doesn't really mean that this is a small piece per se. It is a small piece relative to the group of pieces that the game offers, but not small per se, because if you go through the game, certainly sometimes the smallest pieces are relatively big. And then if you look for other pieces, let me see this one, for example, over here, there you go, it's freaking tiny. And even the big piece is still smaller than the smallest piece of this set, for example. So don't let yourself be tricked by this icon. It doesn't mean small in like absolutes, it means small in relation to the group you're in. But yeah, as we can see, for example, this wall can be used. This is a dry stone wall, but I don't wanna have a dry stone wall. I think this time around, I'm gonna go with the European rustic version and we're going to create a bit of a muddy version out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a couple of these uh, colors. And so we are going to just do this and change a bit of color. Let's go even more red. OK, so we're going to go for a couple of different shades of red. Um, we can just uh, this, this is too that, that's a bit more dry. And then this over here, the grout color is very important because that just ties this all together. And I'm not sure how dark I want to go. I think this is fine. Um, so I'm gonna use this and now in order to keep this piece and I don't want to, you know, uh, lose it, I'm just gonna click once and now it's placed, okay? You can either click on the little check mark over here or place it. Now from now on, you can just go building and to not make this tutorial like three hours long, I'm just going to do exactly this now for the sake of giving you a good tutorial. I quite like this piece as a nice little uh, element. Uh, in general, these Indonesian pieces are great. By the way, just as a little hint, obviously I have all the DLCs, um, but all the tutorial stuff I'm doing over here is also doable with the absolute minimum of this game, which is the vanilla version. So don't don't be afraid to use it when you have no DLC whatsoever you can do. So what I'm going to do is here is I'm just going to use this piece as a little bit of a detail in between. So let's do this and see if we can add a couple of things. Yeah, let's make that a bit nicer like so. So just to have like a framing for this piece. And I'm going to do this only to one side and I'm going to show you why in a second. This might not actually merge so nicely, but I think a limestone wall can actually fulfill the need of what I wanted to do. So let's align this properly with here and then go in and make this properly muddy, dark-ish like so. This is sweet. I like this. I like this a lot actually. And well, I'm, I'm relatively happy with the build so far. And now it's very important, as you can see, this is our screen and there is no yellow border around our screen. What is this guy talking about? What do I mean with the yellow border? Well, I'm selecting these three pieces and now we have the option to merge them all into a group, which I highly recommend because this is the way how you build in this game and manage your builds later on. Let's hit this button and now it is one group. If I deselect everything, you can see the group in front of us and I'm clicking on one item, but I'm selecting everything, which is great. And you can also rename the group and I'm gonna use this one as low fence. And this is now called low fence. This is just for sorting options. It's not gonna help you to find it later on. It's just a sorting option. And in order to build further, I'm gonna check now the size of it. So I'm gonna place this here in the space where I wanted it to be. And then I've got myself a staff member, actually, at this point. As I'm on pause the whole time, it doesn't really matter at this point around. Uh, we are going to need a keeper anyway, so I'm going to drop down the keeper, just quickly hit play so the keeper is down to ground. There you go. And I'm going to use the keeper to see how tall I can make this thing. So you can see this is way too high. And I'm going to move this all down here. And I think this is a nice, this is a nice height um, for adults to watch over. And for kids, we are going to bring in maybe one glass panel or so later on. Okay, so this is basically what I wanted to do. And I said I wanted to have like a railing on top too. So what we are going to do now is um, we're going to, first of all, get something 
um, plain on top because I want to have uh, a nice plain color on top and there are a couple of nice pieces we can use and I like this piece in particular. This is the classic roof trim. Let's use this one because that has a very nice color and I'm going to do this like in a dark red brown version. As always trying to use the angle snap with the space bar just making sure that you use all the hotkeys to improve your building speed. Drag it over, rotate it, keep, uh, keep an eye on what kind of um, angle you have done on. I've got 15 degrees. I could have gone higher up now because as for the basic build Building 45 degrees is usually the best to just quickly rotate things um, and have a feeling of where you are. And now I'm also going to copy the piece. Uh, one more lesson for you guys now. Um, if you want to copy from the origin of a piece, obviously you use the Control X feature. Control X will copy a piece from the origin of the piece and it's going to remain exactly in this position. Now, just to show that one more time, you click on the piece you want to duplicate and then you can do two things. You can either click Control D, which is going to duplicate the piece and then the piece will stick to your mouse cursor, as you can see. No matter where you move the cursor, the piece will go. If you hit V on your keyboard, it's going to disable the Align to Surface option. Now, as I move it further, you can see it just stays exactly where it is. The only thing that's altering is the height. Now, if you hit V again, it's going to alter again. If you hit V again and just shift once and release it, it's not even aligning to the ground anymore. So now it's free floating completely. But sometimes it's very important to stay exactly at the same height or axis or whatever. So this is where control X comes in handy. And so you're basically copying it to the advanced move tool. So it's going to remain exactly in this place. And now you can move it with your beloved axis or gizmo tool. I'm going to move it out of here and it's exactly aligned to the piece that we have just had. And this comes in very handy if you want to align pieces, not only the same piece, but also other pieces relative to the piece that you want to focus it to. So for example, our railing shall be exactly in the center of this wonderful wall on top of it. So I'm gonna hold down Control X and I'm gonna move it up. So this is the center of the piece. So I'm gonna move this already to a place where it is a little bit over here and now I'm gonna change this to metal so I'm gonna go to something that is metal in order to find a railing and there are certainly things like the cable piece over here for example which I think is pretty much already what we could go for we've also got the European cast iron fans let's see if we can maybe find something thicker um, you know these pieces are nice but maybe there's something roundish well that is tiny the animal post but I remember that there might be some other round pieces that come in handy. Let's scroll through. That is too big, certainly. That is way too big. And then we've got these pieces, and I'm not uh, too sure. Okay, so that might actually be the perfect one. Now, this is the painted metal rod thin. So we're going to use that one, but I want to make this a lovely little uh, metal color. So I'm going to go with a bit of a gray tone. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate this to being horizontal. I'm going to move this so it aligns perfectly with the length. And now I can obviously bring this up a little. And well, I didn't hit completely. There you go. You also get the audio feedback when you have placed something down. And now as this is floating in the air, we want to have like a little connection piece. So you can use various pieces for that. You could also use a fence if you want to, a proper fence, and then just sink that one in and also utilize. Actually, you know what? I like this. I, I'm going to utilize this piece. It's a, like a very creative use of that one. So you've got these nubsies here in the center. Um, it's very nice and you're only using one piece which comes very handy uh, for the FPS. Yes, let's actually do this. I think that's looking fine. And then I'm just going to align this piece so that sticks out a little. Okay, now the fence is already done. This is a beautiful fence. I like it a lot. And I'm just debating with myself if I want to keep it at... No, I think I like it. I think I like it this way. Um, we may actually just sink it down a slight bit more because the railing is now increasing the height and so we are pushing this lower border a little bit higher. Awesome. Okay, now we have got one fence piece. That doesn't bring us uh, too high up but um, we can now do something very easy and we can now just place it here and now I want to just bring that all the way around till this very point over there, okay? So that's gonna be what we do, and there are several ways in doing it. You could do this from outside the group. Now, just use this piece, 
hit Control D and then you can see the, the piece is copied and you bring it over here and now you can hold down the Y or Z key, again depending on your keyboard, I will stop saying that now, uh, if you watch the video till this point in time I think you're listening. <laughs> um, now you can rotate the piece like this and this is where it comes, uh, it, it's getting a little finicky and you can just place it down like so and then go further with the mouse. And one thing that is very tricky, now we actually made sure that we are in the right mode. As you can see, at the moment nothing is aligning. If I hit V on my keyboard inside of a group again, I'm just gonna go in just to show you and control D the piece and now I hit V and so we are in align to surface mode, okay? Just imagine we've been in this mode before, okay? Now we go out of the building again and now I'm going to do exactly the same, control D the piece and now we sometimes have the issue that the piece will not be aligned if I hit, con yeah, there you go. Now I hit shift once and unfortunately now the piece will always jump with the terrain and certainly not be aligned perfectly again with your piece, as you can see. Now it's unfortunately not working. So whenever you want to do this, you make sure that you are not in align to surface mode and unfortunately from outside a building copying this you will not be able because you can see there is not the option to bring it in. I mean now you can do vertical snap again um, but then it just snaps on vertical in one meter steps as you can see over here. That's not what you need. You actually would need to have the align to surface option which is not in this menu. You only find this in the menu for one piece, for one single piece, if you are in the building and then you have the option. Now, that said, I would also recommend, like a little building tip from me, okay? I would always go like this. If you have a one piece that you want to copy around, making blueprints is the best way of building and to be more efficient. Once you have placed this in a space where you are happy with it, copy it somewhere else. Just take it, throw it away the furthest you can do, plop it somewhere there and then you're done. This is your junkyard, okay? You will reuse this later on, but for the moment this is going to be our junkyard. Don't care for it, okay? We are going to go back for it later. But now we hit R on your keyboard to enter a group, that's another hotkey. You may want to actually notice and also keep in mind for the future. And the R key is going to bring you into any group you can imagine. Click on that one, hit R and you're in the group. Hit that one, hit R, you're in the group. And now in the group, you've got a lot more control to copy the pieces around. Now, if you want to start, you can just use it. Again, there's one little tip from our side. Copy it once, throw it a little bit to the left. Make sure that it is far enough away that selecting it with the multi-select is easy so you're not selecting anything else. The reason for that is relatively simple. Imagine you build and you place it down, you're like, oh man, I, damn it, I didn't make it correctly. And then you undo it and then you have the piece. When, when you only did once, it's fine. But imagine you've got two pieces, like that one has been placed perfectly, but this one is off. So you place it and you're like, oh my God, damn. And now you want to keep on building, but if you select only these, you've got two, but you want one. And now it's going to get finicky because you have to and have to see that you tr find it, you know. But if you've done something like this, you can then still just select that one, copy it over and go on, okay. And uh, otherwise you need to completely undo everything. So as you've seen, I was doing this from copy from the origin, okay. I hit down control X. But as the gizmo in this game is not always super reliable. I found myself using the other technique way more often than this one. And the other technique is the normal control D by ensuring that before I do this, I have disabled the align to surface option and already hit one shift so that the item is not gonna change its either height or alignment to the ground. Once I ensure that this is given, okay, I select the whole thing and now I have to align the height one single time. You need to do it once, okay? And once you've done that, basically like so, just make sure that you really have the exact size. It's, it's one time finicky, but the reward is that now the piece will always be at the exact height you need it to be. And then you can really easily just click it together, just slightly rotate and bring the piece together. And you can actually be super precise with this technique as you can see and you can just drop it down. Very simple like this. 
All right, this time I just quickly cut um, so this is the full wall because you got the idea. Once you're done, you can basically delete this one single piece that you required and you're happy with the placement, fine, but if you need to adjust it, you can still adjust the full group. And once you adjust the full group, I highly recommend always and always use the advanced move. So hit X on your keyboard and then in the center of the group there will be the gizmo appearing and then you can slightly move it inwards for example because I for my liking I went a little bit too much into the pathway um, so I just want to make sure it's dropped back a little. And here's a final little tip from my side. If you build a wall like that this close to the pathway or sometimes even above the pathing, path you know, over here we do cut into the path and the guests tend to stand not even, not even only on the border of a pathway, they tend to stand even like slightly in the, um, in the, you know, dirt area next to the path and then they would actually bug into your piece, you know, uh, and that just sometimes doesn't really look good. So this is where under facilities the actual barrier piece comes in handy. So this guest barrier curb over here will ensure that the guest will not cross this thing over here. So you can then just place this very much in front of it, you know. I'm not going to do this the full, this is just like a little trick for you, okay. Once you've done, just imagine you've done that all the way around um, and make sure that this is done within a building because that is certainly important. Just make that a building and then you move it underground because it will have an area of influence that is greater than the piece itself. Um, so you can sink them into the ground, they will disappear and guests will not cross this area. So it will look a lot nicer when they stand just next to your fence and not inside of the fence, okay? Now this is done. And um, before we go on with the animals and something else, I'm just going to quickly do the two other designs, the two other fence designs for you. And then I will do a little cut when they are placed down and we're going already into foliage, rock work and terrain work because that's the next big step then in our tutorial. You know, we have actually taken a lot of time for this, but now we are moving a lot quicker, trust me. So um, let me just show you the design for this natural ditch over here. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to go for wall because I need a wall this time around. And this time I want to have like this Arctic wood wall. I don't know why, sometimes I like this wall and in this specific case, I want to use it. And I'm intentionally using the grid wall over here because these things can actually click together something uh, very quick and now I want to go to concrete next or oh, actually you know what we're gonna use plaster because I want to share my love for the plaster pieces the plaster pieces have been in the game from the very beginning and they have been abused for basically everything but um, with the integration of more pieces like um, different types of concrete pieces and different types of uh, other pieces from, for example, the Conservation or Europack, they have been a little bit abandoned and uh, here it is my love for them because they have a great texture and they are super versatile because they have the biggest set of non-grid wall pieces in the game. So a big um, shout out to this one. I think this is also, this can be considered a tutorial because that is very lovely. Um, and I haven't really spoken about the alternations of the grid because you can change the size and also the rigid control speed of the grid. Now, if you lower this down, um, this happens over here a lot lower. If you do certain things like this, um, it will be lower. But honestly, I have never really played around with this. I always keep this on one. It doesn't really change anything for me. But um, one thing that's really good is you can decrease the size of the grid all the way down to one meter. So you are a lot more precise with placing down your grid pieces and the same goes for grid height this also goes down to the all the way to zero meters and then you have a very precise movement of the piece when it goes to the um, vertical axis now in this specific case over here I also have auto stacking deactivated if this is activated you can see it will always click automatically on top of your piece, which can be super handy if you want to click together walls real quick, but people always ask for more advanced tutorials, so we are not going to click the walls together like so, but we are going to make them actually a bit nicer. So I'm gonna use this piece over here, um, and I'm gonna use the lowest wall to be exactly behind. And once I have done this, I'm gonna move all this down, so all the way down to, well, let's say here, um, and then I'm gonna see that this is a pretty nice way of doing it. Um, since this is curved to the outside, basically, or basically later on to the inside, there will be some gaps later on in 
this. And this is where the non-grid pieces come in handy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you another trick of building. I'm going to use the plaster wall panel two meters. Now you can see there is a problem. It's not really aligned to anything in here. But there are a couple of options we haven't spoken about in the building menu. For example, the position snap. What that does, it is snapping, for example, to the center of a piece. And that is very handy sometimes if you want to put a piece back into the center of another piece because you've gone offset or whatnot. Um, especially with these pillars, you can see how handy it is. If you want to center that, it just works. Um, this is also achieved by pressing F on your keyboard, which is the hotkey for centering pieces. Very easy. Position snap rotation is even better because you've seen how much of a pain it was with this piece that was a little bit offset but now it should have actually been in the center and also aligned to it but it didn't okay well this piece certainly has no uh no option for that normally and there are a couple of other pieces like wheels or bicycles um, and they have a specific angle how they shall be connected together and then the game automatically does this when you have the position snap but also aligned to surface is a very interesting option over here and this is then also altering this thing to the right alternation so as you can see to the side for whatever reason it just works fine um, and now at this point i'm gonna go back to the advanced move tool and i make sure that the angle snap is turned on bring this piece down rotate this this way and what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to rotate this piece into a angled, you know, angled appearance. And I'm going to put this to 15 degrees. That shall be enough. And then I'm just going to align this properly with this upper area. Now, this piece is a bit big. It's going to be in here in the center if it's too, uh, too straight. So I'm going to use the smaller piece indeed and going to put this one on this side. And I'm going to do the exact same on the other side and just gonna alter it again by 15 degrees, move it with the help of the axis tool. And once this is done, I'm gonna select both pieces and now I'm hitting X again to do a vertical alignment because these pieces otherwise will be overlapping in the texture fighting. And so to avoid that, I'm just going to do this. Just for an explanation, what is texture fighting? Now, in games like this, if you copy things from the exact origin, they will share the exact same coordinates in the 3D world. And the problem in 3D development is that a texture can only be used in one specific spot once. If there are two, they will always fight for which one is going to be the first. And this is where the fighting occurs. And if I do make this orange right now, and you will see this in a second. Whoops, I need to just do that again. And I'm gonna make this orange just to show you this a little bit better. You can already see how this is starting to fight. This is exactly what I meant. So whenever you do something like this, ensure that you move it ever so slightly. It does really not matter how much you move it, but even the very tiniest of movement will actually reduce it. And then basically afterwards, it's almost impossible to create this fighting again because you will not be able to find exactly the same spot. It's almost impossible. It is sometimes possible, very coincidental, but it is all, almost impossible. So always make sure to avoid texture fighting because this will look awful in your build later on. Okay, now with all these things said, our wall is almost done because I don't really want to do more than that. This is like a proper little thing because Animals need to go down here. They will not be able to jump this. They will not be able to go there. The only thing we need to do is a bit of a guest security. And this is where I'm just going to type in fence because you can also search for specific pieces. And in this time, I uh, want to have a fence. And I'm going to use the European cast iron fence because that is a very simple one. And as you can see, I still have the align to position snap activated, which comes in very handy. I'm going to move this over here so it aligns nicely. Maybe this is even too high. I just want to use this lower part. There you go. That's sweet. And let's do this in a grayish color, whatever. You know, let's not overthink it too much. And then we're going to bring this into both sides so that this piece is done. Okay, snap. That is amazing. We've done this. Now, we can use this piece like this. And as always, as I said, just copy it once and throw it into your dump site, which is... Here. There you go. And then we have it for later if we need it again. And now we've done this, we need to cover the sides over here. And 
it basically works exactly the same. However, this time around, as we use grid pieces from the outside, if you use it from the outside, the trick I just shared with you is exactly the same. You can just alter it and move it next to it and just make sure that you put it exactly at the same pace and then blah, 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 just copy it around. You get the idea. The problem if you're inside of the group is, you will see that if you select everything and hit Control X, nothing will happen because grid pieces cannot be used on the gizmo on the 3d axis tool because they are not able to be manipulated on the 3d axis because the vertical area is missing so inside of a group you can only copy and paste things that have at least one grid piece within them by hitting ctrl d and once you do that you will copy these things exactly on the grid and this comes with a couple of well, obviously caveats, but also with a couple of advantages. I'm going to use this moment in time in this very long tutorial to show you an efficiency trick, okay? So imagine you do not have a small area like that, but actually a big area to cover. Like, for example, you want to make like a huge wall over here. Now, what you can do, now you go up, I'm just going to show you over here. You can now click these things together very quickly. Look at that. And the advantage of this, and you've seen how much time it took to just align these ones over here in this nice form factor. <laughs> um, you see how quickly that worked over here. And the reason for that is pretty simple. Copying on the grid will ensure that they are always on the exact same height and they maintain the exact same increment. Increment is a good hint. If you do not want to have this all together, but in the same increments, you can obviously use the grid size for that. Let's say our increment shall be two meters, and then you can basically, well, I'm not sure what this is. Let's just once. Sometimes if you didn't hit shift once, it still fights for uh, the height, but this time around it's fine. We always want to have this height, and there you go. This is that. And if you want to go even quicker, you now can copy all of them and do exactly the same. Just once go for the height, and as long as you're on the grid, nothing can happen. You will always find the same height. So in comparison to the very open 3D gizmo, where it's almost impossible for, to find the exact same spot again, with the grid, you will always find the exact same spot. So see, this is already done. So you can create huge structures in no time by abusing the grid. And sometimes this is exactly the way to go. However, you created a monster of grid fire, uh, of texture fighting now. So the best way of avoiding this, if you do stuff like that, make sure that the left and right part are also altered so just take one of those it really doesn't matter which of the two just just wobble it around a little like i did over here there you go and now you can do the exact same thing again just make sure it's in and then whoops there you go and from over here you just start copying these things over and if i zoom in you can see the texture fighting is gone because they're not on the same axis again because as i said using the grid you will always be flat exactly at the same spot so this is why left and right in my example have to be different heights okay a lot of explanation over here but i think it's uh, justified to give you the best idea and as always um, i'm not going to copy that around i'm going to make this in a second because the last thing we're going to do is a proper nice fence we need over here to do the rest of our habitat okay so in this case we are going for a pretty standard zoo fence and um, I want to start building off of the Australian fence over here that shall be my ground basis foundation piece I'm not sure why but I, I just like this piece okay so I'm gonna use this and then I'm gonna type in concrete let's do it a lot quicker now I'm gonna guide you through my thought process but not more than that I just want to give you a little bit of an idea so what I want is a concrete foundation on which we are building this and my concrete foundation this time around shall not be too big I just want to make sure that this is a proper foundation to the ground um, you know what, that is actually fine. I'm gonna use this, and this is just a proper foundation to the ground. Um, and from over here, I'm just gonna create a building real quick in order to make sure that we're not losing our process. And then once this is done, I have a nice foundation. I'm gonna type in wood, because from over here, I want to keep on building with wooden pieces. Now, obviously there are like a ton of pieces in this game you can use from, so it's not my job to tell you which pieces exactly you're gonna use, but I like uh, in particular the conservation uh, slats quite a lot. So I'm just gonna um, bring those in because I really like them. So just gonna, just gonna use this vertical already at the beginning. So that is sweet. They shall be actually almost perfectly fine aligned over here. So that's the ground piece. I'm just gonna make this a little bit more brownish like so 
and then I want to have something thinner uh, over there. So this should be this. Oh, this is actually the bigger piece. Huh, that would have been nice for the ground. Anyways, I'm going to go with another one because I want to have... This is also a pretty neat one, but this is not the one I was having in mind. You could also go for the Asian water wheel. I like the water wheel thing. This one is a bit of a wonky one, and I still think it looks good. So, well, help. This is gonna be the this is gonna be the top layer. I quite like this as a top layer. So there you go. Because it it is a little bit wobbly, even though this comes mostly from the piece itself. So it's gonna look a bit more used. Um, and I like this. I like this for this specific build over here. So in the Indonesian uh, thread again, there are some very nice rounded. Uh, pieces over here that will be very handy in our build. So I'm going to use them as the main pieces in the center. Make them again. Well, we can actually make them something brighter. You know, I'm, I'm not going to look too much into the building right now. I just want to show you some building tricks and tips, okay? So I'm going to use this on both sides and then I'm going to put this somewhere here in the center and I'm going to use these very thin ones uh, which is on the thin one. Where is it? There was like one there you go. These are the thin ones, which I'm going to use in the center, like there, for example. And then I'm going to use a couple of those and just keep a little bit of a more open space in the center for kids, maybe. So this is done. I like this. It's fine. It's simple. It doesn't really hurt anyone. Uh, it doesn't look too shabby at all. So that's fine. I'm going to bring my person over here and check the height of it. Uh, this could actually be a little bit too low. Maybe some animals could jump over it. But I think for the moment that is fine. Okay, cool. We've done this fencing and I think this is a pretty good fencing when it comes to an area like this. Um, and as for the foliage work later, I would highly recommend to keep a little bit of a space between the pathway and your fence, okay? Because we can actually dress up the ground here a little. Okay, as for the build and the tutorial, let me do a kind of little snap over here, like a little cut to brief you in for the rest. All right, as all the fences are in place now, there are a couple of gaps we have to solve, but this will happen in a second. And as you can tell, I have also done a little alternation of our piece on this side. So the only thing I did is I expanded it a little bit. I used some uh, little glass pieces on top instead of the metal railing, and I changed the color, which I did intentionally to show you one more option that we just recently got with one of the la latest updates. And this is the option over here of the click to select all items in a group which has the same palette and colors. Now, if you click on, for example, this uh, brown thing down here, you will see every piece in this group that shares the same color is gonna highlight it. And now you can change the color to orange, for example. And you know what the beauty of that is? You've got a classic roof trim stone piece and you've got a limestone. These two are not even in the same set or whatever, but you can still alter the stuff on the fly, which is super, super, super handy. If I click this on this side over here, you will see that this time it's only selecting all the top pieces over here that share the same color, because in this specific build, those two have a different color. And oh boy, am I loving this, because as you can see, this will make you um, basically have groups within your group, which is super nice. You have layers inside of your group, layers by colors. That is absolutely amazing. I will make a full tutorial only for that in the future because I think it's a huge game changer that needs to be utilized in a different way, but I love it. So, okay, now um, we've done already quite a bit of nice fencing and we've done a lot of, you know, terraforming on the fly, but what we're gonna do now is some proper terraforming in this habitat and then we move over to rocks and foliage because we need to make sure that this habitat is becoming nice now. So, okay, terraforming, quickly explained. You have got four different areas in here. You've got sculpting, you've got the terrain stamp tool, you've got the painting, and you've got the water. We are going to start with the three obvious ones, and then we go to the last one, the stamp tool, which is a bit of a different one. Anyways, now, the options to the right-hand side are pretty much super simple and super much similar to the building ones. There are a couple of differences where we get to now, but um, you obviously have pull, you've got push, you've got flatten to foundation, flatten to surface, chisel, smooth, roughen, and flatten to terrace. Um, this one over here I'm gonna spare out because there is a tutorial for that on my channel, which I highly recommend 
it's a bit of a finicky one and it would even make this super super long um, and you basically not really require to use that. You can make certain very very shallow offset pool areas um, which are the areas in which the animals can take a bath. You know the ba bathing behavior requires that but as you use that it's automatically creating an area like this over here. This is all you need to know first of all of the of this tool and once you see this you will know that this flat area over here is just beneath water level. What a good segue, isn't it? Because water is the next step we are speaking about. Now water has two different types of water, the calm water and rough water. The only difference for you is the surface texture looks different. Calm water looks like this, as you can see here nicely with the light. And if you go for rough water, you can see it looks a little bit more rough. So if you want to do like a river or something, rough water makes sense. If you have like a calm water, it's that. Then the third option in the row, is select water which is a also addition to the game later on which is going to select the water volume and in here you've got several areas first of all you can check how much water area it is how much the average depth of this water is and you can see what objects are connected to it and you can also customize the water you can say some pre uh, presets you've got the amazonian river you've got the tropical river you've got everglades you've got like azure um you've got toxic <laughs> you've got cosmic cow so there are a couple of things in here you've got pip shot and now you can also change the transparency for example go all the way to 2.0 which makes the water basically 100% transparent like super super crystal clear water You can bring bubbles and mist in and I showed you already how this works And then you can also remove the water by just using the roof tool But you can also just right click on the water if you've the select tool you just right click on it It's gone too. So this is all you need to know about these tools and then you obviously have the to painting tool We used that already at the beginning but just to you know make it all full um, with this tool you can choose from actually eight, nine different textures, I would say. Now, um, auto paint will auto paint um, the texture depending on which map you are, and it's gonna auto paint in water and to the side, for example. So as you can see over here, the game detects where the incline is big enough to do some uh, rocks, for example. And if you then go up, there's grass again, and it's gonna change, as you can see over here. It's gonna make some mud because of the water, and then it's gonna turn into um, into grass, you know, it's gonna create this. And once you are too much of an incline, it's gonna make the um, rock work. So that is how the game just checks it, but I would always recommend to do it yourself. And then there are controls over here, how intense this should be and how big the size is. And you know, the size alters. But again, as I said, you have got the hotkeys on your keyboard, the plus key and the one left to the plus key will make you go into steps of actually 0 0.5, which is even more uh, incremental than in here, which is good. Um, and then you can also do this. Then there is the option if you want to see the um, barriers nearby, this option is almost in every, every menu. And then you can also do this and say off, then it's not going to bother you. Or you say all, then it's going to show you all the different things in your wonderful zoo. Or you say nearby, which is the option I would always keep on because that will help you to understand where you need to paint and where the fence, for example, needs to sit and so on. Um, for this specific build, I don't really want to do too much. What I want to do is to give it a bit more character. We're going to have a hill in the center. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a hill in the center. Not a really big one, just like a hill. And I'm going to flatten this in here to really have, an, have a good idea of where this is. So I think this is pretty much nice. And I'm going to create a little bit more of a hill in the center. And let's just fade that into the outside area. So that's going to make also some, some nice viewing opportunities for our guests from looking from over here. Some of them can be hidden behind. So there is a need for the guest to go around so that they don't see everything at once and then just doing something like this is already making the whole thing a little bit more interesting and then you know what um, this is an offset and since we do not want to create water in here anyways we can use this offset to just bring that in and make like a little mold in the middle here just to lower that down and even create a bit more of an interesting area so there's not really much about this you know i'm just going to create a bit of a difference in uh, height here making it very simple and then going over here to our penguins actually what i want to do is some very slight differences in terrain so i want to have some areas pulled up a little bit more so i'm just going to make this smaller so just very very subtle okay so this is nothing really in particular that's going to be crazy 
just so we have a bit of a difference. We don't even have that much space to play with anyways, but you know, there are these little things that make the habitat look a bit more different later on. Um, so as this is done, the next thing, as I've already promised, is we go over to making sure the foliage looks nice. Now we go into the foliage tab and then we're going to do some rock work. Uh, for the first things, I want to change this to the normal rocks and we're going to work with the temperate rocks. rocks. <laughs> um, and you can use them to basically drop off areas and block them off. I'm going to use this one over here. And to do proper rock work, there's a very simple trick to it. Match the textures. Now, what do I mean by that? And this is legit the only thing we do uh, in this tutorial because it is as easy as it goes and you will become better by simply doing it. Now, there are typically the same rocks in every set you have. They are varying in size and form and so on, but they will all come with the same texture and all of the pieces have different sides. Let's have a look at all the sides of the piece and therefore I'm going to turn right into the sun direction so you can see them. So this is a very flat face over here. Ro rotating this will bring you a bit more of a darker, very sharp edge on this side. And if you go around over here, this is a very bright one without too many um, obstacles in here. And then you will always have, as well as this, there's only always going to be, and this time around it's on the downside, so I'm gonna rotate this the other way around, uh, a bit more of a wobbly face as well. And what you wanna do now is you wanna just bring these things down in an area, there you can see, this is the wobbly one I was talking about. And now as you have the pieces, what you wanna do is search for these areas and then you just connect them together. And sometimes you have a rock like sticking out a little, sometimes you've got a big one like this and you always want to go for the same kind of texture. And then as you can see, they blend in together super nicely. And this is how you create good looking rock work. There's actually no more secret about this. It's exactly this. And what you want to do is just rotate these things. Always hit the Y or Z key on your keyboard. And if you are too lazy for that, sometimes you can also use the random rotation and then it will automatically rotate the piece for you. As you can see, it's always having a little bit of a slightly different rotation. And also this is gonna make you Life more easy. One last trick for rock work, but this also goes into the same for like foliage work. You can also utilize the align to surface option as you can see over here. Let's imagine we want to have some boulders, but we actually only want to have them slightly into the ground like this, you know, like a little pebble or something like that. Now, what you can do is just like use the thing and click some in. Now, before you go on, make sure to not go on, create a building first, okay? Create a group, first of all. And now once you're in the group, highlighted by the yellow outlines to your screen, now you can go on and just copy it wherever you want. It doesn't matter. Make sure that the um, random rotation is turned on. I'm gonna, you know, put down a lot of these rocks over here because we like rocks, you know? Just put them everywhere you can imagine and where you wanna have them. And now go outside of the group. You can see they're all highlighted and now press X. And now you can sync in the whole group. Bam, there you go. And now you only have these little rocks in the ground. And uh, if you combine this with texture and some other rocks, it's it's gonna eventually look really good. Um, but this way it's super simple to sync in some rocks and then you would go basically back to the set we've just been working with. And now you can just, you know, get a couple of more ones in here put another height alteration uh, alternation next to this one, have something else look like this. And this way you're gonna make this look less repetitive and a little bit more like as if it was really planned like this. And um, we are going to also just make sure that this area over here looks pretty nice and closed off. Let's have like a little bit of a bigger boulder here. This could also have like a one like so, you know, just making sure that this is all fenced off properly. There you go. Well, that is, you know, it's not like the nicest looking thing ever in this world, but it's, it's doing its job, you know? It's fulfilling its duty of blocking away areas where the animals could go. We're just gonna do the same here with next to our gate. You get the idea, okay? So I think I don't need to talk more about that. And so I would assume that it makes a lot of sense to move over now to the foliage work. So uh, yeah, you'll see me after the cut. 
All right, so I've done a bit of rock work here before we continue with the next part of our tutorial, which is going to be building and not foliage. The reason for that I'm going to explain in a little while, but first of all, have a look at the rock work I did. So you can see I put a couple of rocks in, um, nothing too crazy, just a couple, you know. And over here, I also made sure that we have a bit of backdrop already for our penguins. Um, again, this is not sufficient to make sure that they can't escape, so we will have to put something else in here to the sides which we will do in a while and we also have to build this wall but this will be included in the building now what we are going to do right now is we are going to do several little bits of building so you guys have the best way and best overview of how to utilize the very strong building tools in this game and we're going to start with this little backstage area because this most likely is more simple and this is going to be done by just double clicking on the building and then we are in the building tab right away we are going to switch over to construction. I would always recommend, by the way, to disable the blueprints because that's just very annoying to have them in. And I'm going to go to architecture uh, because we will keep it very simple, go to walls, and over here we're going to just do a very base structure. So as for the walls, I'm just going to go with... I think breeze is okay. Let's go for breeze uh, block in this case. And we're just going to plop these things in just as we go. So you can see I'm just plopping these things down to create a little shell. And now what I want to do, I want to get this one over here. So what I can do is I copy this and then I'm just going to basically double click on that one. And you don't really need to copy that, but stay down here. And then you are basically in the same tab with the same pieces. Do that again, click on this group. And you can see this way you can just easily switch between the different groups. Um, just right click to disable your piece, click on the next group and then put in the pieces again. What you can tell now, there is a little gap in here that we want to fill. We have several options to do so, um, and I would recommend to go maybe with a pillar or something, like a column. We can see what we can find in columns over here. Now, there should be some breeze columns in as well. Just type it in. There you go. So these are the breeze columns, and you can see I still have the position snap enabled, um, but uh, nothing else. So what I'm going to do over here, there's even like a little gap in this a bit here. I'm just going to hit F here in the center, and I'm really curious to why this is always still rotated. I'm not sure if the oh random rotation is still on. You want to have that off, by the way, because then the pieces will actually be completely straight. Hit um, a spacebar again to make sure that it's aligned to the to the ground. And you know what? To keep it simple, we go to the middle element. I'm going to explain the reason in a second. So we're going to rotate this by 90 degrees. So it's standing upright. And now we can move it to both sides of the building. One and two and this gap is nicely fit in now the reason why i chose the middle one is so that i can stay to this orientation because otherwise we would have this one tilted to the right and to the left and then you would need to change this all the time we don't want that and we can also now go back and kind of select both of them you know one two you just did select both of them by holding down shift and then Control x and you will be brought up with this menu pull them all the way to the back and now we will have to see that we can close off these gaps over here by the way maybe one mistake i made over here we can get rid of this one as well as this one because we've got some windows to fill how about doing that and now we are just going to show us the window piece there you go just putting that in here is going to help us and they can see we do still have that gap which is pretty big so what i'm going to do to keep it very simple I'm just going to use the same piece over again. I'm just going to move this here. So that's a nice little gap filling element. And then I'm going to push this one over until it's fixed. There you go. That's looking pretty decent. It's fine. You don't really need much more than that. It's it's like a backstage area, okay? What I want to do, I want to have like a semi-high wall in the center. So I'm going to make sure that this is a little bit of a smaller grid. And then I'm going to keep like a wall being over here. And I want to have this gently... Um, you know end up over here so we can put some tools or something down here and you know what we do i'm gonna become a little bit quicker here in building you can follow along what i'm doing but i don't need to explain every single bit anymore if you have followed to this point in the video you are well prepared for this part now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to bring in a bit of a concrete ground where we can have some uh, you know, some things like some racks and rocks and so on, uh, just like so. And then you can also, I'm just going to type in conservation and I'm going to go to all pieces because in the conservation pack, we had a lot of great assets uh, that we can utilize over here. So for example, some boxes for this case, I'm going to deactivate the position snap with F and I'm just going to put some boxes on top of here. So as if someone has 
put them there and then we can check what is oh look at that there are even some more cool boxes we can put together here and then stack them on top of each other as if oops uh, sometimes you just want to deactivate the align to surface there you go Again, shortcut V is most likely the most important one that you have in the game anyways. Um, but it's just, this is a different looking one. So let's do it that way. Uh, we can have some plastic uh, kind of little buckets uh, standing over here. Smaller one too. And then they also have some of these cool things. And I really would like to have like a water barrel over here too. Like a conservation water butt it's called. And then we could have this water thingy maybe just next to it as if there's something enabled in there i don't know and then we could also use this wheelbarrow card as a little showcase for what i've explained a little earlier in today's one um so if you've got the position snap and position snap rotation activated um actually let's deactivate that for the first piece there you go put it down and then we activate f again and now you can see it's gonna snap it exactly into the position where it's required to be and then you can click this together like as a Lego piece. I really do like that. And then you can just move this thing a little more up if you want to. So there you go. And then you could also put some stuff in here if needed. Um, I want to type in thatch real quick because these thatch pieces are kind of like hay or something. So you can bring them in. As I said, sometimes the uh, position snap is not going to be very helpful. So you do not want to have this always enabled. Let's see that we go for the smallest one and bring this maybe we can even turn this over like so as if there's some hay in here you know it doesn't really need to be much but like something like this you know um again it's just for the tutorial sake but i think you can already tell where this is going and what i want to do now because i really i hate i'm very sorry but i hate this pattern i hate this texture of the staff path so i really love to make sure that they are vanishing so what we're going to do over here we're going to type in stone yet again and then i want to go to the wall pieces and stuff and i'm going to look for a specific piece i have in mind um and i want to go for where is it where the easy uh sometimes you gotta yeah you, we can actually use this one uh, this might be a bit too small for this case. No, let's make it a little bit bigger so it's not really um, as unnecessary. So this one over here is a nice path you could use. Like, for example, this looks kind of neat if you put that to the ground. It's actually a pretty... Yeah, let's, let's use this one. I quite like this, so we are going to utilize this one instead of another one I had in mind, but whatever. So we're going to create like a little uh, sort of group out of it. And now as the group is placed down... Shall we go with three wide, maybe? I think we're gonna go with three wide, just to ensure, you know what, we can also align it a little bit like this, so it's not completely three wide. It's gonna move this to avoid texture fighting, and then we're going to copy everyone over here. There you go. And now it's very important to just use two at once, and then we can do the trick I just previously mentioned, um, and we're going to align these things just simply like so, ensuring that this is a nice ground cover. Again, it's maybe not as clean as it can be. So if you take even more time than I do right now, you will be able to make it even more clean, okay? So uh, I also highly recommend to spend time making these things look clean because that is what you want to do in the game like so, uh, like this to really ensure the best result. And now let's just utilize these last ones and push them all the way over here. And now this looks already quite a lot nicer as for the backstage area. Um, we want to recolor these things into a bit of a more uh, grayish color that fits a bit nicer to our penguins, I want to say. There you go, this is pretty nice. And we will also utilize some palm trees and other stuff to block the backstage a bit more away. Um, what we can do over here, we can use something else. And this building is not yet done. Um, so before we do this, I'm very sorry, I forgot that. We, we should put a little, you know, roof on top, shall we? Uh, again, for the sake of this building, we are going to keep it simple. We will make it a bit more advanced with this one over there. But, you know, keep that in mind. We are going to just put a roof over here. I'm a big fan of the slate roofs in this game. And so we are going to go with the slate roof. You've got a flexi color version and a non flexi color version. For this specific case, I'm going to go with a non flexi color version. Um, and I'm going to go with basically this piece, I think. Yeah, that's what we're going to use over here. And I'm going to put this one down. And then you have these things that can be nicely attached to, whoops, uh, to this build. So you can put one down 
here, for example, and then you can also bring that in on the other side and then you've got like this nice little uh, design element if I you know this is kind of how you can call that and we're gonna bring this one down here too oops I wanted to click this first there you go just do the same over here so that they're all the same height you can see the roof is gonna be a bit more tricky now to fill that in but I'm gonna show you in a second how you do this um, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to do the same as we did on the other side here too just do this and then in the center we want to have this trim that is just a single trim and this is the wrong one i need to go with a bit more angled one there you go and we also need to put this down on the back side even though we are not going to focus too much on the back side anyways but this is um how you do it very easily and quickly the roof is still open so in order to avoid this we're going to go to breeze blocks again click this building and then you will find a piece that is perfectly suitable this is the gable one meter and then you can just move that up until it's basically filling in the gap and the same happens to be the case on the other side it's very simple you know just drag it all the way up and then it is in there so very nice and now uh, about the roof you're gonna duplicate this piece and you can either move it to one or the other side it doesn't matter um, i'm gonna move it to this side because it's easier for me to select this now split that from the group because in this moment it becomes a group on its own you can press x on your keyboard and now you're able to move it a little bit more precise and what i want to do over here is just tiny little bit bring it up and down just ever so slightly um, in order to make sure that we only use this little bit of space okay and then select that again and do the same on the other side just a tiny bit like so and from the front the roof now already looks pretty much perfect there are a couple of tricks now to make this building look a lot less tall one of my biggest issues with these buildings is that they are super super tall so what you can always do is make sure that the roof has another level in the front i'm going to show you what i mean by that so if you go back and type in slate and you have this slate roof, for example, that matches the same angle as the other roof, which this is not. Uh, so you need to make this one. So this is matching the same angle. And now we need to go to two meter. And now in the two meters, you can just bring it down like this, as you can tell. And this way you're creating kind of a little uh, awning in front of your building. And usually this automatically creates uh, a nice little a visual effect of bringing the building down and making it appear as if the roof is bigger. So what I mean by that, if you go from the back, you can see the distance between the, uh, the door and the top layer you are seeing is shorter. So from this angle, the whole building looks a lot smaller than it actually is. Um, what you do with the backside, it doesn't really matter. At this point, you can use foliage to cover that up uh, later on, which is the last thing we are doing. Foliage is always the last thing you should do because that will bring the whole thing to life. Now, I'm very pleased with how this has turned out so far. Um, what I want to do now is I want to make one more thing before we go to this building. We're doing a custom lantern because I feel like, you know, decoration is very important in this game and we have already done a custom little fence. We're going to do a little custom lantern. So therefore, I'm going to use a little head start over here with an existing lantern piece and I'm going to use the conservation lamp bulb because I just like that. OK, so this is now again going to be a bit more of an advanced building. I'm going to take a little uh, off here so because that's annoying at this point and um, I'm just gonna place this down real quick and I need my person for reference there is my person for reference and then I'm just gonna bring the person over here so that might be actually a little bit too high so I'm gonna bring this a little more down and I think this is fine okay now this is done what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, go to the piece and say duplicate from here and the next bit I'm going to do is metal is what I'm typing in and I'm gonna go to all the pieces because we need to have a foundation and all that kind of stuff and you could also have like some cool styling stuff like so but what I want to do very much at the beginning is we need to create a group out of these so I'm looking for a piece that comes for a good foundation and I like this piece here quite a lot so this is gonna be my foundation and also my connector to the top layer lamp. So I'm going to use this here and all the way back to the ground. And now I'm going to select 
not you, you you're going to go there. I'm going to select you, you and you, and I'm going to create a building out of this. Good. Now, as this is done, we can keep on building from the origin of the one piece because that will always set it to the same. We could also use some classic fence copper pillar, which is super big, but yeah, this is way too big. Um, I thought that's a little thinner, but it's not. Uh, so we're going to use a couple of other pieces. Now, this is a lot of searching, trial and error. Usually this is how it works. Uh, we could make a very thin one with this one. And I'm kind of a bit of a fan of doing this. I think I like this. And now the only thing we need to find is something to round off the lamp on top. Just as like a little, I don't know, maybe like a water secure thing. Or we can also do something like this. I, I, don't, I don't mind this. I think this, this looks kind of cute. And now we need to find something which we put above, like this one over here, the Indian wall light has a very nice kind of uh, canopy above it, but this is uh, not the one to go for. We may have some pots or something pottery that we could use. I'm just gonna scroll through here and see what we can find. I'm actually, you know, I'm just, okay, I'm gonna use this to show you a bit of a more advanced building, okay? So I'm gonna use this piece very much over here. I'm gonna show you the rotation trick. Um, if you rotate a piece like that, you can create something really cool like this. And we are going to do the exact same now on top, but a little bit different. So what I want to do now is we are in the center of this build, but I want to do something very nice with this very tiny piece we have. However, this is not going to work out the way like this, but we're going to use a trick. First of all, I will need this piece, so I'm going to just copy that, that in. So I'm not going to miss out on this later and now i'm going to type in mud the reason for that is we do need the mud column the mud column is the most important piece when it comes to this trick this is also important that we put it down to the center and now from over here we are going to utilize this piece to remember where the center was and i'm going to create a form now that is resembling this little canopy i want to do so i'm going to do this and I'm going to slightly rotate this thing just a little bit, okay? And then I'm going to drag it so that it works like so. And I'm going to drag it one more time. And I'm going to rotate this to the other side. I think it could look nice if we have something on the outside too. And I'm going to overlap this a little. So we have a bit of a, a bit of a nice texture to it. Just making sure that it looks nice and it's not too long. Okay, now this is going to be our reference piece. We are going to select all the three and the mud pillar. And now you're using the control D tab to copy it with the piece together. And as you can see now, you are perfectly rotating this on the central axis. One, two, and three. Now you've got this cross. You can delete all the mud pillars you don't need. Just remember to keep one. And now you're only selecting the pieces that you find on top um, and potentially not the light bulb. Um, let's see if I can do that again without the light bulb. There you go. And now it's very important to activate angle snap again. Otherwise this doesn't work. Hit angle snap or if it doesn't work with your spacebar, just do it in the menu. And from now on you want to copy it from the origin again with control X. This is going to bring up the gizmo, which is now centered exactly in the center of these pieces. And if you rotate these pieces now, you will see that you're creating a roundish dish with it, or the canopy of my uh, lamppost over here. You could stop with this, or now you hit spacebar again to deactivate the angle snap, and you're going to bring this until you f actually you find the last gap that is still existing and put it very much in the center. Once you've done that and clicked, you hit angle snap again, and now it'll automatically snap to the other gaps that still exist, you know? Remember, this technique is looking very nice, but is insanely piece heavy. Once you're done, you can delete this piece again. And now in my specific case, I went way over the top. This is way too big, this dish over here. So uh, we have to get all the way back. It's a little bit of a tricky thing, but um, in order to make it look good, I would assume it makes sense to just get rid of those two and just oops, uh, move these pieces all the way back here to the center and then just do the same thing again, which I don't need to bother you with. Right, that's looking a lot better now and I'm gonna drop it down to our lamp over here. So you can see this is, this is very neat, very nice and you know, it's, you could do so much more, but this is now a relatively modern little lamppost that we could uh, carry on through our build. So if we feel like uh, having this everywhere, we are just going to 
bring this thing everywhere, you know, we can just plop a couple of these down and have this lamppost feature in our zoo. Maybe on all these edges there makes sense to have one, I don't know. So we also know exactly where these gaps are. There you go. Very nice indeed. Okay, so next up is our main building over here, which we're going to dress up a little bit more differently. Um, so we have already done quite a bit and uh, I want to just take you on the journey building this. But this time around, I will actually not explain too much because we have already done a lot. The thing I'm going to focus on is uh, how you can experiment a bit better with the pieces. So let's go into the building and uh, the step number one is to really quickly get your idea of the building in. And my idea in this case is I want to have a brick wall um, and I want to have like a pairing of this classic brick wall, which is non-flexicolor and some more flexicolor grid wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a brick wall gate here. This is basically what I wanted. I'll put another one here with a fake door later on. And now I'm also going to go into another tab over here, which is this Indonesian brick wall set, because that one is flexicolor, and we're going to align those things together. Um, what I also want to do, I want to fill this backside area um, with a proper wall, and we're going to use a different type of door over here, and I'm going to basically close off the entire building like this. What I also want to do um, is to really make sure that this is going to be very bright and white. So I'm going to select all these pieces. Let me just quickly do that. And with all these pieces selected, we can now match the color that we want. And as I said, I wanted to have like a brightish color variant. I think I'm very happy about this. Okay, so this is brilliant. I really like it. And we are going to make this like a proper building with a central spine axis for the roof. And therefore I'm already going to the roof and I'm going to go for uh, the slate again. I'm just a big fan of the slate roof. I said that already, but here we go. And this time around, I'm going to make the roof look a little bit different. So I'm just going to start over here very much Oops, uh, even smaller of a gap. So that is where I want to start. One, two, three. And then we can have a bit of a more, a bit of an angled roof that goes from here. So there we go. Just putting these three in. And then for the center, we could use something like this, for example, and then have this little gap in there. Or what we could also do is like have something even more angled in there just for the sake of making it look even better. Yeah, that's a kind of a nice roundish roof, um, which I'm a big fan of. I think it's looking, it's looking nice. Okay, so this is very nice. And now I'm obviously using the technique of basically, you know, what, I'm going to show you something else. I want to recolor this, okay? And I have set this option as brilliant. Now see how brilliant that is. You easily just select all this, all these pieces now, and we can now create the roof color we want. Uh, in my specific case, I wanted to go for a very um, dark gray, Anthracite, I'm not sure if this is the English wording, but like a, a very dark gray variant and then painted wood, well, can also be dark. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty much how I wanted it to be. Okay, and now the most important part is to copy over these pieces to the other side so that the roof is the same. Grid size is always changed. Like these tiny things are a bit annoying. That's uh, typical for the game. Unfortunately, the um, alignment of the grid is changing sometimes. So yeah, uh, that's a little bit of a finicky thing to do. But this is a nice building. And now as for a nice little trick in this game, to achieve a bit of a nicer result, I'm gonna show you something. So what we wanna do, we wanna get this roof and create a bit more of a nice roof to this side. And now we are going to utilize our multi-select tool to get all the roof pieces um, selected at once. And once we've that done, we split this from the group and we're gonna align this to the center. So now we have a nice little area to both sides in front of it. And we can still utilize now the building here, which I'm going to do. And I'm going to use this brick wall over there uh, just yet again to find the right uh, wall piece in order to make sure that this looks good. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this one up. I'm very much wondering why this is not the correct color. Okay, well, this, this just didn't use the correct color. I'm a bit kind of wondering why, but anyways, I'm gonna make the color right in a second. Then I can show you another trick. I mean, as if the game knew it needs to show me that trick. And then um, I'm going to also introduce this piece over here. Oops, in the center. Oh, it's actually, it's actually the more 
angled variant. So there you go. And you're going to use this piece here too. Okay. So these two pieces have to be aligned in color. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this color. You can actually do this like you copy on your computer with control C. And then you go to the new piece and you go into the same tab and you make control V, hit enter, and then the color is already aligned on this piece. Um, that was very inter intelligent of me to not do it on this piece. So hit enter. And then uh, you go to the second color. You copy that one again the same way. Yeah, now you can select both and what the heck. This is not the right color. Okay, I'm still going to do this. I'm not sure what exactly happened over here. Let's copy that again and copy both and put that one in and we're good to go. Now, if you don't like this, you could still go in and copy them to be more in the front if you want to have something like this in the front. But I like this the way it is. I quite like this, okay? So you can see this building now uh, didn't take me very long to get a nice alignment of things in. And it looks very, really, really good. But there are a couple of things that I'm not really a big fan of. So uh, we're going to go back into the building. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the doors, first of all. And I'm gonna use this door over here because I like this door quite a bit. And the bit, uh, the guy, the kind of cool thing with this is, if you have a door like this, you can make it really look like as if it's integrated in the wall. Sometimes I really like this. Um, I don't like the wall color, the door color. I want to make this a little bit of a bright, brighter wood color. I like this, I like this, this is neat. And then we are going to have a different one on this side. And sometimes you just need to play around which one you like best. And I like this one. And you can also, by this trick of moving them into the dedicated area for uh, doors, you can actually get some nicer door designs out of it. Um, but sometimes, as you can see, you want to hide the upper side as well. So you need to pull them a bit more back. And then over here, you can also, you know, play around with the different door colors. I'm very much opting for a bit of a brighter one. And the metal color can also be very bright indeed. What is this? This is the stone color. It doesn't really matter. And the light color also not. Okay, let's apply. And then you've got this gate over here. Pretty neat, pretty nice. And we still need to fence off the kitchen a bit nicer. And this is where the Indonesian brick comes in again. Very handy. So Indonesian uh, brick. And this is Indonesian temple. That's exactly what we needed. And again, it doesn't have the same color, which I'm a bit confused to why it does not have it. So you know what I'm gonna do over here? I'm gonna utilize this piece and we're going to bring this in by sinking it down. It's not the correct way of doing it, but you know, for the sake of keeping it relatively short, that is nice. Okay, cool. Now, I promise you that I'm gonna show you how I work with groups and with elements and stuff like that. So the main building is nice, but I want to have a couple of more styling elements. I want to have some more wood integrated. I want to get some decals in and stuff like that. So what I'm usually doing is, and we're going to go into the building, and now what I'm going to do is I am in the menu and I'm going to throw the pieces I like to have just on the ground. That's the way I'm doing it. But you have to ensure that you do not have the um, random rotation on because that one is a little bit nasty because then pieces lie around like crazy. So what you want to do is you're going to check the menu for pieces you need. However, I have a certain idea already. So I'm going to type in wood and just throw a couple of things down uh, in order to, you know, keep it relatively short over here. So what we're going to do is I like this um, over here quite a lot. So I'm just going to utilize the grid piece so everything is aligned in a nice way. I do like these pieces quite a bit. And then we can also check for like this staircase is nice, but I don't want this. I like that one, the little planter. Um, I'm also a big fan of, let's have a look if there's anything else. Again, I don't want to overdo it, um, but these like these planks over here are neat. So I'm just going to use some of those. And then I do also like these paint. Uh, yeah, we can't really use them over here. So forget about those. Um, and I'm a big fan of this twilight thingy. So that's that. And with those pieces, and I'm going to keep this very simple now. Uh, with those pieces, I'm always then just going crazy and trying to make some creative stuff. Uh, just aligning them to the color palette I had so far in my build. So maybe you just darken this a little. Maybe pair that with the roof color. I don't know, something like this, and then this, and just a bit of a brighter, yeah, that was nice. 
and those two can also be a bit more brown. Okay, now as this is done, um, I'm just going to use that to create a bit more of a style, okay? So it's not really too much I'm, I, I want to do with those, but for example, this is like a harsh cut between those two. So I'm going to utilize this piece now to create a bit of a more transition between those two areas. Therefore, I'm just going to place one here, copy it over to the other side, select them both and just bring them up. There you go, already easily done. Then over here in the front, there could be something more connected to this area. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to copy this one to the wall. Actually, you know what? We're gonna use the bit of a bigger one to give it an impact. And then we're just going to align this to this side, rotate the piece, and then this looks fine to me. So one, two, three, one, two, three, just copy this a couple of times. There you go, very nice. And now over here, we can use this piece, for example, um, as like a pillar. And we're gonna bring this pillar. To keep some more space, I would go for the center here and another one over here. You know, try to break a little bit with the straight and, uh, or the very, very straight building. I just want to make sure that something is also offset to make it a bit more interesting looking. I think this does the trick relatively easily. And then for example, over here, just I don't like this because it looks not really integrated well enough. So I'm going to use the same piece over here as like a little, um, yeah, kind of wooden thing to where the windows are just make it a bit more official. And then I actually do not like this side at all. So what I'm gonna do with this side is I'm just gonna close that off with this fence piece, like as if this is just meant to be a little bit of a potential look inside of the kitchen, but not meant to be as in like an open window where you can grab things or something. You don't want to grab things. So I'm just gonna copy one and two. And maybe, maybe we can sink them in. I'm not, I'm not sure how wide they are, but let's see if we can move this into the window. That looks pretty good to me. That looks pretty good to me. I think there's even some more space left. I'm just gonna make this a little higher up. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna sink this down a tiny bit and I'm gonna use the top layer now to do it that way. Yeah, that looks fine to me. That looks really good to me. I could even imagine making this on the upper layer everywhere. I, I think this looks pretty good. Or maybe we're going to do this with the other piece. Let's have a look how this piece works. Mm, and just going to do the same. Like so. And just going to move this. Let's see if we can have this in the center. That works. Cool. And now this is the height we can go for. Looks a bit me medieval in this case, which I didn't even intend to have, but I'm fine with this for the sake of the tutorial, so just do it that way. We forgot about this piece in between those two, by the way. Just do this as well. So just sneak that in. It doesn't need to be completely to the top. Uh, so I'm going to delete these two. I think I don't need them anymore. But what I want to do is I want to create like a little fence. And I'm going to use, oops, I can use this piece with the fence. This is going to be on top. So let's make a little... Uh, top layer out of it just this is the same length which comes in super handy and just gonna do it that way I want to have it a bit more rounded on both sides so I'm just gonna do this copy that over to the other side bam 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 move it into position there you go is that like kind of nice on both sides yeah I think of it is Maybe just tiny bit more into the center. There you go. I'm gonna keep that and I'm gonna delete all these pieces as they are becoming unnecessary. And I wanna have like a planter covering already this area. And I have the planter in the center here and maybe here. These are the three planters we have. Nice. And then this little fence over here, which um, I quite like. I'm gonna split this from the group because I'm a big fan of this one. Um, go into the group, see if we have activated align to surface. We have, so I'm gonna deactivate this. And now I'm going to use this fence as like a little bit of a more frame option for our restaurant area, you know? Just gonna plop these things in as if this was meant to be like an actual restaurant area. And you will see later on that's gonna look pretty, pretty good if you do that. So 
just so you not have only plants, but actually um, some kind of fences to, you know, properly fence off your restaurant area. And in this specific case, I actually want to make sure that there is like a connection between those two things here, but not too much. I want to make people go to the toilet to the left hand side, but this is like the restaurant side of things. Um, and in the back over here, we will also have like a little bit of a fence, okay? So just copy this thing over ever so much. It's not like too crazy. There we go. Okay, so this is this. And last but not least, we gotta have to bring in some tables and stuff, okay? So this is very nice as is for the restaurant. Uh, we also messed up because we forgot a door. Let's quickly put a door in. And there is a door. And this door is going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be that one. Is that the same as the other one just sticking out? I think it is, right? No, that I want to have like another one. No, this is too big. Can we have like a normal door? Like what is this? This is not a normal door. This is also not a normal door. This is too normal though. Uh, how about the metal door? Oh, this is all wood. How about a metal door? Uh, like this normal one, I quite like this one, like for the restrooms, it's fine. Let's use this one for the restrooms. And um, we can also get rid of, oops, this is the one piece I forgot for my trash yard. So let's bring that over. At this point, we can also just use this and throw it over here to the other side. So it's not visible for our area anymore. And now we go to facilities. And in facilities, we go to the bins and benches and the picnic benches or the restaurant tables in this case, because we want to have restaurant tables. Now you can pretty much throw them down wherever you want in here. Um, as they are not mandatory for putting on path, you can basically put them anywhere. You could even put them on, on the grass, wherever you want. Um, because as I said, they are not mandatory to be aligned with um, the pathing because there are pieces that are connected to the restaurant which you'll see in a second um we are going to link some tables and this is going to be done with tables link tables and now you can just drag over and every table highlighted confirm the link and unlink and then you're gone uh, done and we can also hopefully use this multi-color option on the tables well we cannot or can we just select them all maybe because they're not in a group Okay, whatever, we can select them all, which is okay, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I want to have this uh, all styled a bit more nice. Metal color, should be metal. Uh, seed color, why not get it this time around like a bit more colorful? Or what shall we, shall we use? Something like an orange, I think. Or not orange. I'm really into like a blue color, maybe. Blue, dark blue, marine blue for this area. And then we go for like a very very darkish darkish black gray blue table that is that is very dark though but it's okay you're gonna leave it for the moment but it fits like with the water area over here okay now you've learned so much already um there's one more step to do and you know i could have gone a lot more into detail with this building like uh, even detailing the interiors a lot more you know going in with them very tiny details but you've seen tiny details with the lantern how you do it the last step of our tutorial is going to be foliage and filling in the gaps because that was a specific re um, request from you guys and filling in the gaps will be the most important thing to make everything come together and this is now going to be the last part of this tutorial which is a super long tutorial but i really hope you find it as helpful as i hopefully find it making it for you so uh, let's do the last step until we are done all right, so as promised, we are now going to the last thing before we actually also put the animals in. And I have a couple of tips for you at the end of the video, how to deal with certain things about the animals. But we need to do the most important thing and that is plant work, foliage work. In the meantime, in the last cut, I have actually done a couple of little things. I just made sure that this wall over here is connected and I also put a couple more rocks in here and added a little bit of a nice fence over here. This is just one glass piece, uh, a glass modern off-grid wall curved four meters what a name dang it um, however there's one more thing I want to do with you guys together so I spared that out to show you sometimes if I build pieces I already have certain things in mind and with those uh, fences over here for example um, you also want to consider that kids need to see something in here too and specifically with little penguins sometimes it makes sense to grant them a bit of a better view and since I use these um, wonderful glass pieces in here as you can tell you can just easily get rid of of those pieces over here as you can see and now after you've removed everything else it looks like a proper 
intentional little gap in between. You could also do that over here with like maybe just that one. And then, oops, uh, make sure to actually only delete the pieces outside of it. There you go. And you've got a wonderful little fence with some openings that look actually pretty good. You could technically do the same over here too, but I would suggest that in an area like this, there's more likely going to be something like this. And let me just do this real quick with like plaster pieces. Uh, oops, that is the big one. This is the smaller one. So you could easily do something like so, just to create a little staircase in front of it. You quite often see these things in zoos too, like for little kids to just walk up there and have a look. You know, you could also just use that now and copy it over to certain areas here for the kids to walk up, you know, just like this. It's it's like a tiny detail. You don't really need that, but I think it's, it's beautiful to look at. But now, as promised, we're going to do the foliage work. And in order to do so, um, we will first of all bring in our animals. So hold on for a second. All right, the animals are on their way into the habitat. As you can see, our caretakers are about to take them. And while we're waiting for them, I want to do something together with you. Um, you can buy the animals via the trade center, and then you can basically go here to the animal market, type in the name, and once you find something like this a zebra over here, you could adopt it, or we're gonna go with the plant zebra over here and adopt that one. We've got two different currencies. We've got the normal money in this game, which is basically just a, a normal money currency. And we have the conservation credits, which is a secondary um, currency that you achieve by uh, raising animals perfectly fine and uh, you know making sure that your zoo runs well uh, and all these kind of things um, to get some more special animals via this currency. Now um, I want to have more animals in especially my African habitat over here and therefore I need to understand which animal can go together with another one. So we have the giraffes in there and so I'm gonna go for the giraffe and you've got a bunch of info here in the Zoopedia and you can also go for the interspecies enrichment and then you can see all these animals can go together in one habitat and as we obviously have the dromedary camel um, I think I want to have that too and you know what would also be very neat I think the uh, let's have a look I think the on uh, oryx is kind of a cool one too so these two are pretty neat as well so in order to get them you basically go back to the animal trading and then you just type in what I have just said. You know, I just want to go for the camel. So it's the dromedary camel. We're going to buy three of them. There you go. And I also wanted to have the oryx. So we're going to use that one. We're going to want one male and two females. Not make it too crowded. And then we're going to go to the animal storage, select them all and bring them into the zoo. Now, this is the easy way of doing it. And now you can see this is the habitat. And if we click on the animals, you will see there is a couple of things that I'm not very happy with. And um, over here, we are already facing space issues. Um, and they're also fighting for dominance over here. Uh, animals are escaping as well, um, where we have to check this um, out in a second. And we have to basically do this right away. So you have heard that there is some one escaping and you can see that it's this penguin down here um, and uh, in order to solve that issue I'm pretty sure that it's just raising this wall over here a tiny bit same goes for that one I'm gonna turn this one into this wonderful one and raise this even a little bit more and now that should do the trick and we're gonna press H over here and over here you can see what the traversable area is now you can see there is no escaping option for them anymore which is great and if we check over here with the giraffe for example it can't escape how about the zebras they can't escape either what about the dromedary camel they cannot jump out as well which is great and how about the oryx Awesome. So all of them are pretty fine, but you can see space and social group is not the best um, they have in here and all of them have no enrichment items. So you could easily go and now enlarge the habitat if needed. Um, I will actually not do this because, you know, this habitat and uh, whole thing is already way too long. But what we're going to fix then, we're going to get rid of a couple of animals. This is the way of fixing it. We're going to get rid of this female and we're also going to get rid of the other male. So this is the alpha male. So we're going to get rid, rid of, of course, I mean, this is Simba, of course, we're going to get rid of this one. I think we are also going to get rid of the camels right away, even though I love camels, obviously, um, we are going to make them go away as well. And then we will have to see if that works. Well, there is a third one. Eh, come on over here, send them back to the trade center. 
hopefully that's going to help with the space issue yeah that looks a lot better and now in terms of enrichment um, we can just plop a couple of things in, but we'll do this later um, because we first of all want to do the foliage work. Now there are also guests coming into our zoo. Um, this is a good moment to show you the options. If you go into the settings and you have also some uh, game options and there you can also limit the amount of guests and this is available in all the parks you're playing with and um, you can limit the number of guests and drag it all the way down to 500 which is exactly what we're going to do over here to not make it super crowded. Um, at this point in time, we obviously have no nature whatsoever done. And this is the moment where we go into nature now. See, it is very important now to understand the differences of both habitats. And unfortunately, both of the habitats will not require too many plants. As we click on the giraffe and go into the environment section, you can see the coverage can be one third of the habitat. It's Africa and tropical and grassland. So if you click on these filters, you will obviously have only these things available. And now we are going to do a couple of tricks over here. I want to have something for a ground blueprint, so to say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check maybe three plants like these. Let's stay with the smaller ones, actually. I'm going to put on random rotation right away because that is what we need. And maybe we have like a little bit of a grass piece I want to have in here. Let's use the bigger one and sink that in a little. So that is my first little blueprint. I'm actually going to select all of these pieces. Shell before. There you go. Okay, that is sweet. And then let's see if we can find some more things. Um, I think I like this for the dry grass quite well. I want to have this bush, but then it's very important to not only have the bush. Maybe we have some dried grass. Look at that. This is nice. So under the bush, there might actually be some dry grass because obviously in there, there is not really that much neat grass. But then we can also use a bit of medium grass around. There you go, which could be growing around this a bit more. Select them all, create a group. Okay, so this is pretty nice. We've got two of these things. Now they are relatively small. Let's do something more big uh, right away. Um, and let's see if we have some, some bigger ground coverage available in here. So there are some, I don't really like these flowers in here. They don't really do well with these certain habitats. Um, let's see if we can find something else. I mean, the Scavola is nice, but not for a dry habitat that they usually have. We have a lot of dry tropical litter we might use in a bit. Um, there's not really that much, to be honest, what we can use over here. So let's go actually with the dry grass. Yeah, let's do a bit of a dry grass pattern over here. So with different heights like this. And then we can also use a couple of smaller ones and have a bit of a more medium dried one. See, the color is a little bit different. So like that, it, it's kind of a nice shade. And we're gonna select all of these without this rock, by the way. How about no? There you go. And what I also want to have is a couple of tree variants. Um, and I think I'm gonna plop them in later. So what I did with those three things is I made myself some blueprints that we can copy around in our habitat. And since we have the random rotation activated, we will always have a bit more of a uh, rotation. If you still don't like it, uh, you can obviously always use yourself and your ability to rotate pieces to create a little bit of a nice offset if required. So just putting down a couple of those and immediately this is turning to look different. Um, we can also have this little patch over here, which I actually quite like. Um, and you could also do this and just stay within the group, by the way, and then just copy it around. So you can also see, let's bring this in here and then maybe to the ground here. Just uh, hit shift once you want to bring it down. So you can just hit shift and then things are automatically aligned to the ground. Again, some of them are floating now because I aligned this to the centerpiece. Sometimes you can also have them next to each other like that. And then you can do the same with the dry grass. I want to actually make these patches a little bigger. Um, I think I like the idea of having a bit of a bigger patch doesn't really look too shabby so I'm going to use these in these grass areas here I think this is this is kind of sweet and I'm gonna do this uh, right over here too you know it's just to show you okay so I'm not going to overdo it now just so you have an idea how this all works 
So that's pretty sweet. We've done most of it and now we can also check how uh, they like it already. So we've just covered 8%, so that is still pretty decent. Um, that means we can also do some more bigger trees and I think this area requires some more bigger trees. The filters still apply. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it like actually you would see that in a zoo. So sometimes they have like some some bigger palm trees in the back or like in, a, in an area where they don't cover too much of the visible area. Maybe on here in the center as like a visual focus is nice. And then we take some smaller ones here to the front um, to just kind of frame this entrance area. Maybe like we take another palm tree here too. This one too. So these like these palm trees usually grow in, in various areas, but to be honest, I don't like them. They're too big, too big, too big, too big. Um, I'm gonna stay with this one and gonna move this back. And then I'm going to utilize some other trees that I quite like. So this one over here is one I really love for African areas. It comes in these various sizes and you can vary um, actually the visible area quite nicely with them by putting them down in locations where they really make the habitat look better. And what I usually like to do is to give the whole thing a backdrop and therefore this palm tree comes in very handy. So one, maybe two, maybe one big one as well. And then we have to check how much we have already taken of it. Okay, well, there's still enough kind of space to put them in. And then I'm gonna go with the Marula tree. I like this tree quite a lot. I think I like the texture, I like the pattern. It's a very neat looking tree. You also want to have some here to the sides, give the animal some shade to sit down below. And then you could also maybe put something here in the back, just carefully trying to match all these things. Um, and this Pingo tree over here, usually this uh, takes a huge amount of the um, coverage, but let's put one down. Yeah, that is, that is a sweet one. And I think from this point on over here, I'm gonna make some realism and therefore the nettle piece is always absolutely mega. So what you wanna do with the nettle is make sure you have the um, align to surface activated and also position snap is not needed, but the random rotation. And now you just click the things down. We remember the same trick we already did and just merge them into a group. And from now on, it's just about clicking them in basically all the corners and edges that you can imagine. Uh, I'm gonna tell you why in a second. Um, because in like this is like a European temperate zoo we do. Uh, this applies mostly to temperate and maybe taiga, uh, yeah, well, taiga and uh, also just in general tundra biomes as well sometimes, you know. Um, but as soon as you go tropical, I would do this in a bit of a different way. But uh, the nettle piece is obviously something that just grows everywhere and in masses. And it just kind of gives that worn down feeling to an area without actually being worn down. Um, this is just because they grow everywhere. Um, the zoo would have a hard time to get rid of all of them. And so just throwing them in basically in areas around, you know, stones and trees where you just can't get too close to when it's, um, you know, when it's all about like cleaning up the habitat. Like why would they get over here all the time? You know what I mean? Um, they would be able to just do that on the other side relatively easily because that's like a huge area where it could actually go even with a lawnmower or something like this. But in these corners or like on the other side here, it's like harder to get here and not even that necessary. And so um, it realistically would have these areas quite overgrown by the nettle pieces. And this is why we're just going to throw them in, okay? So uh, let's just see how this turns out. There you go, this is our group, and now we sync the group in just a tiny bit. And look at that, this is almost phenomenal. I really like that. I really like how this turned out. And the only thing is, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm at this point, looking at the habitat, it looks already quite a lot better. But the area that really annoys me is this blank space over there and this blank space over here. Now, there are a couple of tricks to deal with this. I'm gonna deal with this one in the front with some rocks. So we go back in here and we're gonna select uh, this tropical rock because it's like very muddy and nice. Um, and I'm gonna sink this in further than the main part here. So make sure it's lower than the main part, just like so. And then I'm just gonna click this to the front to give it like a very nice edge, okay? So really play with the rotation of the piece. Um, this is gonna give the whole area a lot more character. And for me personally, this type of rock work is part of the foliage work. You can't you can't take those things apart. It, it just is a combination of both in all um, circumstances. And actually, you will always focus on both in order to make things look really good at the end. Um, so I'm just gonna throw in some more pieces here. 
of rock and look at that immediately you've turned that bare area into some nice looking area and the other thing over here i'm going to use a dead tree for if we have one or i'm going to look for a, another type of log so we have like this fallen log but i don't want to use this with some roots it's not really what i want to have let's see well actually we also would have this tree but i am not too certain if i'm a big fan of that one like Sure, it is a great, like, typical African tree, and it would make sense maybe to have it on top of this build. Like, it, it actually doesn't look too shabby to have it on top of here. Maybe go for the big one. Nah, the big one isn't it, but, like, the small one, or, like, the medium-sized one does it, and then we need to move that tree a little bit into the light, because otherwise this wouldn't work. Um, then we go to construction. There is a very nice log piece available that I want to have over here. So type in log. You could easily have this one. Um, and drop it down below, like so. Or you could also have the big boy that I really like to put in African areas, and this is that one. Um, it's huge and separates areas, but I think it looks nice. And once you've done that, you definitely need to take back the nettle pieces and just embed this with some more nettles, because that is realistically what would happen, you know? And the same goes with this piece here too. There you go, and you've created a wonderfully looking habitat. You could obviously go in and do the same now, but what we need to do before we are finally done, and again, as I said, for me personally, this is part of the foliage work, is definitely going in and doing the, um, uh, the work with rocks and logs and also the enrichment pieces. Therefore, you go to Habitat, and in Habitat, you also have enrichment pieces, and it's easy, just type in giraffe, and then you will get all the pieces for the giraffes that are suitable. And now what we're going to do, we're going to plop down some of these. So this is a wonderful feeder I want to have in this lower area. I think this is a beautiful area. And then I want to have the food cage. I'm not sure if I want to have this one, to be honest. I want to have the rubbing pillar, because that is suitable for every every animal that we have in our habitat anyway. So I'm gonna put this all the way to the front here so that the animals come very close to the guest looking for something. Um, and you know, what about a sprinkler? I think the sprinkler is also pretty nice. Let's put that here into the back. There you go. Then we type in zebra to see if they have something else to do with. And yes, they have. So I'm gonna give this this little grab ball. And I, I like to, you know, paint these things. Whoops, why did I do that? I like to paint these things like also brown, gray, and so on. Sometimes I just really don't like that these things are just too obvious. And also I like this kind of barrel and I want to put this here so it always rolls down to this lock. And I quite like this because if you hit play, there's actual physics involved and then it just rolls down to wherever it's needed. Um, we also have this hanging grazer piece. To be honest, I would like to see that. Where do we have another viewing option for the guest? I think as this is a nice viewing option here too, I'm just gonna plop this, well actually you know what, I'm just gonna plop this here. And then I will use the terrain and smoothen out these edges that have been created. Um, the enrichment pieces, originally they just flatten the area real quick if you place them down. So sometimes it's more clever to put this in earlier, but uh, I have already considered some spaces for this. So that shall do the trick. And now you can see this looks really like a finished habitat. Now, as you've seen the trick over here, let me do a little cut for this habitat. And then I'm going to show you some more tricks before we do the very last part of this video, this insanely long video, where we are going to fill in the gaps. Be excited for that because this is really great. Um, if you master this, your areas will look so much better. But first of all, let's do the little cut to give you an idea of how you could scale um, this technique into an area like this because they share most of the things they do share because um, this is Africa, but it's aquatic and desert and not um, tropical and grassland. But some of the pieces are shared as you can see. Um, and I'm going to do now exactly this for this habitat. But as we have spent already quite some time over here, I will exactly do the same and I'm going to show you the result, but you don't need to see every single bit now because that would be a little bit over the top. And also, they don't really require that many plants. Anyways, if you click on the little penguin, um, I forgot to show you that the coverage is only 20%. So you can see it's already to the maximum and I just put down a couple of little things. As you can see, I just decided to go for two trees because I just always like, if you don't use them and use a bit more of grass, these habitats look so bare bone and empty that I was like, you know, just not overdo it, just keep it simple. And two, two of these trees also add a bit of greenery and makes the whole thing nice. Okay, now as this is done, I want to show you uh, one more thing because you see that there is one space very black here in the back. And if we click on that, this is actually um, a billboard. 
and now you can actually say we want to use a image and I've got like a bajillion images in here and honestly I have no idea what the heck these are but there are like so cool images like also from some uh, oh gosh I this is I don't even know what to say but oh look at that let's let's use some of the concrete ones I think they are fair to be used over here I think there should be some brighter ones as well i'm gonna use this one because it has like a nice texture so i have like a bajillion of these um, textures in here you can um, always use the projection screen and then you've got a, a folder on your computer that is basically called user media um, in your file or, uh, file folder from frontier developments and in there you just throw in either jpegs or pngs and then you can see there are like a bajillion options to put it in i'm just going to click through these areas i obviously have some eyes but there's also an option to put videos in um, or like in this case this is like a camera this is a connection to a habitat camera but we don't have a habitat camera as of now so you can see default so um, if I'm gonna do this and we have the camera in here the there you go this is the habitat camera and if we are going to place this for example I think this is a brilliant spot over here let's plop this one over here I'm not even sure if that's correctly the right orientation or if it's the other way around i think it's the other way around uh like so we'll know that in a second if we click on uh, african oops um if we click on enter camera view well it was the other way around so let's just rotate this once more there we go that is neat so we have the habitat camera over here and now if you go to the screen you can basically say that one and okay this one is not really working because it only works with the tvs and not with the projection screen but in theory you can now connect your webcam to it if that is a uh, tv and this is just a screen it can't but what you can obviously do is you can also put some videos in and let me just scroll down there you go we've got a fish video and if i hit play you can see these fish us women actually in here so you can even have some uh, wonderful backdrops like that i did also do some meerkat backgrounds as you can see um i basically did so 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 much um that i can't even tell but there's like a, a whole bunch of options you can do uh, you can do oh there's also coruscant from the star wars tour i made um yeah i you know i don't even i, th I think there's not really oh, look at that we're just gonna keep the rocks you know, let's keep the rocks. You can also do the rocks. Yeah, why not? Just give them like a rock. It's fine, you know. Um, that is pretty much how you need that. Let's screw the donation boxes. This is the last thing we do. Um, so yeah, the habitat is done. And as promised, this is where we are going to do the last step. Because there was one thing I have never done in a tutorial. So this is a world premiere in my tutorial in after hour two, I guess, of the tutorial. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's going to be, and this is interesting because it's going to be very, very nice now. Um, filling the gaps is something I really love to do. And before we do, we still have that little information kiosk, by the way, over here that I need to dress up. Give me a second. We'll quickly do that. All right, there we go. We just quickly dropped in the little info booth. As you can tell, um, this is like, I think this is one of these kind of nice temporary shelters that can be repurposed or whatever. And they're just like in this little space, just that the person isn't getting any wet or whatever. And there's like a tiny narrow gap over here where they can squeeze into that little house, you know, and whenever they need something, they go back. Okay, but we are here to do the filling, uh, filling gaps and stuff. Now, the first thing we're going to start with is the backdrop of the scene, because this is equal important and for the backdrop of the scene we're first of all going to get rid of all the filters and we are going to go into the all tab again and now what we will need is and this is one of the techniques we've already used a couple of times we are going to first of all check a couple of trees we want to use I want to have the beech tree um, and you know what I just plop them behind already so I'm going to use these through variants. Um, I'm not going to go with the biggest. Be careful with the biggest variants of big trees anyways, because they are most likely big trees. You will only use them for the very backdrops. Um, I'm also going to use uh, two variants of the spruce tree. 
I like the poplar one, I don't like the basic one, but these two poplars are nice, uh, so 03 and 04 are pretty decent. Um, we are also going to use Bracken quite a lot, so I'm gonna plop down a couple of the Bracken variants, and then we are also going to use a bit of the buffalo grass, I'm gonna plop this already down for us as well, and also the buffalo grass small will come in handy. The cabbage tree is mega important too. Um, specifically those two. We are going to use them in a bit as well. So this again is my technique of throwing down things we're going to utilize. Um, this coastal pig face is also very amazing, um, but maybe not for this specific park. Then this tree over here is for me a must. The ash tree is uh, always needed in all three variants. They come in very handy. And uh, we go further with the normal, uh, how is this pronounced, creosote bush. And uh, you can basically use uh, all of the variants if you want to. Um, they also have this with like yellow in, which I'm a big fan of too. And what you also want to do is the crawberry bush. This one is very neat. This is quite often overseen, um, especially 04 and 05 are very, very good pieces. The same goes for the uh, crawberry bush 05 and 04 from this variant. And then there is even more and I'm gonna see the Elm 302 is one of my favorites too and the Elm 301. Um, and I'm not even kidding, these, these things are very important. The fountain bamboo is rather important too. And I'm gonna use these three variants that you've seen here. One meter, two meter strip and two meter. And then there's one more piece we want to, actually, you know what, these new hosta, uh, hostas are also very nice. And I want to go with the large and medium variants of both. They are very nice gap filling elements anyways, but there's one more piece we need to go for. And this is the, um, well, actually, yeah, let's leave, leave that one out for a later stage. And we need... <sighs> Hold on, where are you guys? Obviously, the nettle. I've already talked about that one. Let's use those two versions. And, you know, what? to keep it short, I'm going to type it in. It is the periwinkle um, leaves 01 and 02. These ones are also mega important when it comes to dressing up an area. This looks like a very basic palette to you maybe right now. But trust me, this is the absolute mega thing to use later. But before we do this, we need to do a couple of things with rock work because these areas over here look like kind of ugly and it, for dressing up I would always recommend go with the theme so we are in a temperate area so we are going to use the temperate rock in this specific case so type in temperate so we have the right rock already um, and then make sure it's always aligned to the right height make sure it's not going too much into your pathway sometimes it can go a little bit in and then you go again to random rotation and you start dropping these things in until you're rather happy uh, with how it looks. So, you know, most likely I'm going to start with this one, uh, Rock 01, because it covers large areas rather quickly. And then it's all about feeling um, how you feel putting these things in. And sometimes you can also do fancy stuff like using these things in front of the walls. And I think in this specific case, I'm quite confident using it that way. And on the other side, we're going to use this one. And I'm going to use both just to dress it up nicely. And we might use... Yeah, why not this one and just rotate it to the other side so it's looking a little nicer. There you go. And I'm already quite happy with this, to be honest. Uh, maybe like a little bit of a stuff down here just to get the get the corners nicely dressed up so it's not looking a little bit more natural. Okay, that should already do the trick. Let's see if we need any other support. Yeah, maybe we're going to throw like a bigger bigger one here just to give it a bit of a nice feeling. And I'm also going to put like a bit of a rock formation here so just that this gets a little bit of character but other than that i'm ready to go for you and with you with the foliage work so this is pretty nice and we're going to start with the bigger trees okay i'm gonna start with the beech tree 01 which is like a medium sized tree and i'm gonna put this in this planter and i'm also going to put this uh next to here and I'm also going to put this here. So just to frame this, um, there is like the rule of three is a little bit different. Um, if you know, want to more know about the rule of three, um, you better follow Mr. Mike Sheets and other people from Bro Nation. They have some insane tutorials on foliage that go far beyond what I'm doing over here. But they also say like if you do planting, mostly you're using three pieces in, in a combination to always give this like a character and a structure. But um, I'm not going to go too deep 
into that. For me personally, it's always about feeling, but the rule of three, like always sticking to three pieces of a group helps me to really get into the mood. But what I want to do over here, um, this is not the rule of three, this is actually the rule of um, a lot of pieces, is I'm gonna use these kind of bracken pieces to just fill in a little of larger areas. Like, don't do the mistake that you cover up everything. Leave little gaps, you know? And we're going to fill these gaps as well, but this looks a lot more natural if you do it that way. Just leave some gaps in between, you know, just drop a couple of ones over here. And maybe you have one more overgrown area in this. The bracken also does do wonders. And then we also have it here in front of this tree. Why not? And there's also a couple of stuff going on here next to our little area. We don't have this in these small areas. Why would we? Um, maybe with the smaller piece, there could be one going in here. Yeah, that, that looks quite nice to me. And what we do now is we're gonna go with some bushes and they are the next level behind, okay? So we're just going to plop some of the bushes, not that many anymore, okay? Just make sure that you have some of these in here too. And maybe one of these bushes can come in handy here. Okay, nice, you've done that. Um, and then I would also, you know, mix in maybe some other bigger trees. So this spruce tree over here could go there and maybe another one a little bit here to our backstage area. Sweet. Now, as I said, my favorite, one of my favorite trees is the common ash tree and I want to have one in this area. So I'm gonna put this here next to the house. Really love it there. And I'm gonna put one next to this building here. Again, I love this tree. And then another one, the smaller one, the common ash tree too, is going to be one in here. I don't wanna have like a super large tree in these because they are still in planters. This is also why I decided to go for some smaller ones. And speaking of which, we are going to have one sapling in the center, which is just recently planted. So to also give this a bit of a character. And you can already tell where this is going. Look at how much nicer this area looks already. But we need to focus on a couple of things. You've seen I've taken some big trees as well and this one will be placed now intentionally behind the habitats okay so this is where you can really learn to fill in gaps that you have in your zoo maybe put them next to each other and then we're going to have this big tree here too there is going to be one is the ren rotation turned on yeah okay um then we have one more here and another one goes here maybe not uh, inside of this one so maybe put that a little bit back and then a couple of one. Make sure that they are always standing, not directly next to each other, but just covering still a bit of a larger area um, of, of the area in general. And then you can go in maybe with the, ne with the next variant. This elm tree over here will come in handy too. Just place it in the center, maybe in the foreground sometimes. And maybe there is another tree that we need. And let's see if we've got one more part and that could be the poplar tree. I quite like this one too. This is gonna be placed here, maybe a bit more here. This one can be a bit closer and then like so. And we're almost there. Maybe this can go into the front here too. So if we go back and I always like to go more or less on eye level and you can see now it already starts to become very characterized over here. So this bit over there is a bit empty but this is technically where uh, the path would go. But we are not quite done yet. We are almost done, but we're not quite done yet. What we're gonna do is, this. Uh, these are the ground covering things. And actually, you know what? Let's actually grab all of them now and bring them to our path in the front. We can leave the rest over here. Let's take them with us too. I'm gonna to move them right in here in the center. Now, this is where the magic is going to be finally happening. You're gonna use these pieces and you're gonna drag them all the way down. Make sure that you have the random rotation on and then you bring them really down to this area. Be brave with that, okay? You can be brave. You can really just put it in. I needed to learn that too, that you can be brave with it. Make sure that it's also overhanging into your path. That is just breaking with the ordinary, and I think this is very important in order to make your areas look a lot more realistic and nice looking. You can really place these things down, make sure that they, you know, the only thing you should avoid is this floating over here, but we can cover this up later with other pieces. Um, and so you just create some more character you know, sink it in somewhere, leave it out somewhere else, and just make sure that it also goes into the terrace over here. Did we, yeah, we forgot this area maybe. 
just in between of these. There you go. I'm quite already in love with it. Okay, nice. And now you alter this a little. Um, you've done this now. You could also go with the other colored periwinkle. Just um, mix them in just to get a bit of, you know, things don't grow the same way. These things like weather and sunlight and shade and all these things um, make plants grow differently so play with also with the different alternations of the given pieces so you will have a bit more variety in your pieces as said earlier these um, nettle pieces always come in handy in areas where you would see some more growth of of pieces uh, without um, you know or well, which areas wouldn't be so often maintained or so so you can also just drop them in between just to give this whole thing a bit more character. And this is basically how you can fill in gaps very, very, very easily. And uh, sometimes you also need to be uh, aware of where realistically um, would be stuff growing also into the pathway and where it wouldn't. Um, and also the wouldn't is equally important to the where it would because there are areas, for example, like this, that are usually pretty, pretty clean. You can, however, still do some decals down here, but we we won't overdo it completely. But what you could do now is go to go in with the hosta medium, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this just very close here to the to the border, just a tiny bit that would grow through here, and um, you know, with decals sometimes that would look even better, just to break a tiny, tiny bit with it. And then you can use these things also as like a little bit of a ground coverage here and there. This would be open because people would walk there. And sometimes you can just think of it like, like a very natural thing, how, how things would be overgrown, okay? So as I said, this area over here, there wouldn't be anything growing because people would walk there and uh, yeah, that, that, that just doesn't make too much sense. And uh, in here, you would maybe see some of these things and then Obviously, we would need to put that on the other side too, but in here we just take the other one. Why not give a bit of a bit of a change in here too? There you go. Look, that looks already pretty neat. And then let's see if we forgot anything. This foreground over here looks a little bit boring. We definitely need a bigger tree for, for this area too. But let's first of all see if we've missed out. Yeah, there you go. This is a bit barren over here. And I guess I'm gonna go in with a couple of these crowberry bush pieces on this side, just like so and also to the back here. And the other stuff will be done with the smaller nettle piece. Just drag it all the way down into the ground. Make bigger patches, make smaller patches, you know, again, mix that up so it's not always the exact same. And there you go. It already looks so much better uh, to have this contrast in here. Um, and I think for the sake of the tutorial, we are gonna leave it as is over here. Uh, you could still go in and do more, but I think uh, for the sake of showcasing, uh, this definitely does the trick. Now, speaking of the trick, there's one more issue we have with this area, and that is this insanely huge plaza here in the center. Uh, I really am not a big fan of this. So what we are going to do is, we maybe wanna have like a highlight tree in the middle. So what we're going to do is we are going to see if we can find maybe a tree that has a bit more of a character that we want to have over here, which still would be in the European area. And let's see if we can find something very, very nice. Um, I didn't really have made my mind up about this. Maybe a birch tree could be nice. Uh, some of these birch trees are nice because they have maybe, maybe this one is nice, but I quite like these ones over here. They have, they have really nice character. But if we use this one, we can actually use two. I'm gonna use this one and another one. So that is already breaking this whole area up quite nicely. And what we're going to do with this is, because this doesn't look really nice without, we're gonna put some mulch down and we're gonna bring this down here and here. And one thing that is very important, if you do that, you need to put in a barrier, first of all, like a curb. And um, often I do this just really easily that way. First of all, deactivate the random rotation and then I'm just gonna create like a, a circle around like this. It doesn't even need to be super accurate. It's just to make sure that the people don't walk in there. There you go. And just connect those. Blah, whatever. You can also be a bit more, like go a little bit further around this because that will help um, that they actually do not uh, step in there. Create a group and then we can just put that group around here too. Select both groups and sink them into the ground. 
job done sweet and the last bit i would love to do over here is actually getting some proper benches in we have already some picnic tables but we don't really have benches because benches always make a full picture so what i'm going to do is i'm put a, pen, a bench here another one here on the other side of the tree too the same goes over there i'm gonna do some in these open areas that we had over here look we could also yeah okay it doesn't let me do this so maybe we're gonna put this Look, this one is this one is perfect. Maybe we can do another here. That is really cool. Oh, look at that. This is cool. Maybe we can get squeezed one in here too. So that is the the last thing to fill in gaps is really making sure that you utilize the power of the given um, path elements because they always really help with selling the idea um, of a park. You know, if you see these things uh, like like bins and stuff like that, oops, they wouldn't be in front of the little kids. I'm just gonna put this here then. Um, maybe have some of the benches on the other side too. And you know, in, in, in this way, you are easily creating an area which looks really, really cool after just a little bit of, uh, you know, adaptation and, and a bit of crafting work you've done in here. Just move that over to this side. And as I said, I'm still not 100% convinced with this area, to be honest. So let's see if we've got one or two more things we could put in here. Oh, by the way, before I forget, let's let's use the cabbage tree small and show you a bit of a more nice thing. This tree is a very nice tree specifically for, well, actually every single area for a bit more overgrown vibes. Really not sure why this is such a great piece, but you can throw it in wherever you want and it just creates a bit more, um, you know, I'm not sure what kind of plant that would be, but it just kind of breaks the the other things a little and looks still very nice. Uh, honestly, I have no idea what tree we should put in there. I don't know why, I still have the idea that this could be an ash tree. Maybe we're gonna use the biggest even. So, I mean, I'm not the big fan of a shade, so maybe we're gonna put this on this side. Hell yeah. I quite like that. Be brave on what you build, but maybe we're gonna push this all the way over here so the habitat is a bit more visible. Yes. Now this is what I'm talking about. All right. So I think this is the moment where we can call it a day because this is the perfect tutorial area we have built. You learned during these two and plus hours Everything that you need to know in Planet Zoo to build a successful habitat, two successful habitats, buildings, everything in between, making sure everything works, and so on and so forth. I really do hope that you guys enjoyed building this a lot. Um, we have no donation boxes. Maybe this is the last tip to earn money. Uh, you obviously need to have donation boxes if I'm not a stupid person as I am sometimes who never plays franchise mode. Um, you need these things in order to get money so you would put them down specifically in areas where people would stop to watch the animals just like over here for example and maybe in this area over here too they would actually start using these donation boxes and throw money in and you would also need to have some education boards uh, i mean this is relatively obvious but i should have said that and we're gonna do this and put some education habitat education boards in here maybe there's one also hanging here to the side so this is gonna get the African penguin label and then we would also maybe have one that is on this rock over there and we're going to put this into the retinual giraffe and you know, also education is important, but you have a couple of options. There are so many more things to do in uh, doing tours and so on. This is also very important. Maybe we should also, to finish up the habitat, really quickly go through all the different staff members because they, now as you start playing the game, you also need to know what staff members do. Now the caretaker obviously is the person who is taking care of the, uh, you know, um, cleanliness of your park and not the habitat. The keeper is taking care of your animals and the cleanliness of your dedicated habitat. The mechanic, which we don't have one yet, is the one to repair things like barriers and vending machines and all that kind of stuff. The security guard is taking, well actually security to another level, he is checking people uh, to stop them from pip, um, pickpocketing and so on. We've got the vendor, which is a person who works in the restaurants and stuff like that. We've got a vet, who is the one to bring, um, you know, animals that have a disease or so into the veterinarian station, if you had any, because we don't have one. And the educator is a person who is educating the guests, either on education points, which I'm going to show you real quick, 
So there is a um, education talk point. This is that one, an animal talk point that we can actually put down already. Why not? Just put it here. And then you could also kind of create a um, wonderful talk about, let's say the dromedary. Oh, well, we don't have it in the habitat. Let's do the zebra. And now this is um, done. We can put, uh, for example, talk should be in March and we create a new work zone because that is something we haven't talked about either. And a work zone is relatively easy. And the work zone basically is where everything works. Now, we only have this area here and we call this work zone one our tutorial area. And now when you go into your stuff overview, you have an option to bring them to a certain work zone. And we want to have our keepers in this tutorial work zone. And we also want to have our educator, where the hell is him? The lawn baker is going to be in the tutorial area. Now, this is connected to the tutorial area. And now, automatically, when the month of March is, our educator will go there and hold a talk. You can also do tours. This um, the tour function is relatively easy too. You basically go to the facilities and now you've got a tour point. And you could now have a tour point in the beginning here. Let's not use purple, let's use another color. So you can basically have one tour point here. You've got another one that is here. And then maybe you've got another one here. And there is another one that goes all the way down here. And now what you do is you basically click on that one. And then you can basically open the tour manager and create a new tour. And we're gonna say this one is the test, you know? test tour and now you can select the start we're going to select this one as the start confirm that one and now we select the points which is relatively easy we've just plopped them down one two three and then say confirm and now you say select end which is going to be our starting item uh, and confirm wait hey oh i guess okay well whatever i need to put like a second one down I forgot about that. This is still one weird thing. Um, select the end one and say confirm. And then uh, complete the tour point setup. This is that one. And we can say this is going to be plant zebra. And we're gonna go to the next one, which is gonna be the African penguin. And the same goes over here. This is the African penguin. And the last one over here is ending the tour. So that is wonderful. And now you can see our tour is operational. If we go into the tour manager, you can see that is done. Um, it is assigned to a tour. We have everything set. And now again, the tour will be done with an educator. So the tour is assigned, everything is done. It's very simple to set it up as you can see. And you can also recolor the tour because the um, educator will have a sign in front of him or her. And this sign will have a certain color. So I'm gonna make this red and this tour would be the red tour now because you can obviously have multiple tours in your zoo so um there are a lot of options in here how to do your education rating okay now we just you know what it doesn't matter how long this is going to be it's going to be super long anyways um you can also have like an education stand for kids maybe it's actually good to speak about that one uh, because that's relatively simple. You plop it down and now kids can interact with this one. They go here and measure themselves against a giraffe. So there are a couple of these things you can plop down, um, like this, for example, with a paw print, and then the little kids would go here and test this. Actually, this, this works pretty nice in there. You can change the colors, and then, as you can see, kids are going there. Let's have a little look. Look, she's doing the little trick over here. Dang, and then the game asks you what paw is this from and she's like okay this is that one one two three question really like that i really like the animation i like the fact how the family is doing that together so a lot of um stuff going on in here but yeah so i guess this is it i think i covered mostly everything you need to know to be good to go with this game a lot of the other things that you will need along playing the game actually is very nicely explained you've got every uh, building that you need to build so for example now the game tells you you can't find an accessible staff room because we have too many staff members and just a small staff room um, we could plop down bigger ones now uh, but this is something you really need to know exactly for, you know, building in franchise mode. And this is going to be a bit more easy to watch a franchise mode tutorial, which I do have on my channel too. But uh, we should have started the video completely different if that was only for franchise mode, because it 
you know, it's a different way of approaching it. This was a tutorial for getting on top of everything in the game, what you can do. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial to the fullest. I certainly think this will help you. Um, and it was quite, quite a thing to sit down a couple of times to record this. You can't imagine how often I did this because of crashes and stuff. I do hope at the end of the day, you didn't have the feeling that was uh, an awkward video with too many cuts. I hope you appreciate that. Uh, and um, I'm very curious to see how many people will watch the entire video. By the way, I think that's a good moment to mention the partner of our channel. Um, Instant Gaming is a wonderful uh, service where you can buy games, DLCs and all kind of stuff for gaming for great value with good customer support. And also, um, you can grab all the DLCs of Planet Zoo if you haven't them already for a very great value as you can see. There are also obviously other games, uh, every, everything you can imagine. Um, it's very worth looking into it, so link is in the description as always, make sure to check it out. But now, uh, back to the past, Rudy. If you have watched the entire video, please do write this down and, I don't know, just say golden llama camel, whatever. Let's say that the keyword. If you have watched the entire thing, call the golden llama camel in the comments. I'm very excited to hear your feedback on this, and if this is going to be something you like, I may do this for other games too. Until then, have a wonderful time, and if you need anything more specific, check my tutorial playlist. It's going to be linked to your top right now. There is literally everything in what you will need. So, have fun, enjoy the game, enjoy this year, have a happy 2024, and I'm going to talk to you, as you can guess, in the next one. Bye!